everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Procrastinators Podcast. I am the best guy ever, and today we are joined by Ben Oliver. Patreon.com slash Polystation 2. Hypocrite. Franchises, more like French ISIS, am I right? Oh. <laughs> did did that already lethal- happen? Didn't that already happen? Like, I think it did real? it a couple of times. Uh, and here's Lethal Aurora Mage. Speaking of terrorists. Why do my introductions <laughs> always get interrupted? <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, the real know. terrorism is destroying intros. That's what. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I feel. I feel Nate has a grudge against me. That's that. I didn't interrupt shit. It. Don't blame me. It was not my fault. I have zero responsibility here. Uh, all right, now I'm in a bad mood. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to kill everybody today. Let's fight. Uh, fight. Fight. Let's fight. fight. Let's do it. Uh, listen up, team. Uh, today's episode is franchises, subtitle, and how to ruin them. That is the overall theme that we're sticking with here. Um, so there's a lot of franchises in recent years that uh, have just gone to shit. Uh, and we're here to, to kind of discuss why. What, what, if anything, can be done to avoid it for the ones that have survived, the few that, that still remain. And uh, I guess, you know, also to examine the other side of the coin, see who's, who's doing well these days. So let's get into it. What do you think, guys? Who's got an example? Who, who wants to start us? Well, oh, oh wait, Urban Dictionary. Oh, Urban yeah. Dictionary. What have I done? Oh, what have I done? Almost. <laughs> I know. Almost got away with it. The, uh, the PCP okay, franchise sorry, was almost cleansed of a horrible <laughs> meme, but <Okay>. alas. <laughs> All right, Urban, uh, my, my friend, here is uh, the definition of a franchise. Franchise, an entire series of the film. Wait, this doesn't have to be a film. Uh, the original and all its subsequent sequels thereafter. Um, this is terrible. No, what the fuck is it's, this about? It's any piece terrible. of media. It's urban dictionary. Yeah. Nay, have any of these <laughs> ever been good? <laughs> have we ever no, had a good definition? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, fran- oh, I get it. Okay, uh, fourth definition of franchise. F- <laughs> franchise, <laughs> verb. To get it in, to smoosh, a.k.a. to have sex. And then here's the oh, example. Okay. Did you franchise? Oh, I franchised last night. Hashtag sex. Hashtag fuck. Hashtag hookup. Hashtag penis. Hashtag <laughs> smoosh. That's... <laughs> Uh, I assume they mean that in, like, the Fight Club definition of franchising, where uh, Ed Norton's dad, like, set up a bunch of families, of which he was one, and he's like, you know, like that, that sort of thing. Um, You with me? You yes. with me on that? I, I, I understand, okay. but, wow, I've uh, never, the, ever the heard thing of about franchises franchises. The thing about uh-huh. franchises that I was going to talk about is oh. is that um, they they sort of ruin certain things within a franchise like if you've got Mm. like a series of video games um good games are overlooked or like harshly judged if there are better games in the same franchise like the label brings down opinions on the things that are good because they're tied Mm -hmm. to things that are better and then things that are bad are elevated because they're tied to things that are better than them Sometimes as well. You know, That's definitely true. It's funny That's we're doing true. this topic when we are because our good friend Jesse Wood just made a video mm. all about this topic uh, concerning right. the God of War series. Uh, That's very oh, true. Yeah. It was very, very topically relevant and everyone should watch it because it was fucking fantastic. It, it, it was a great classic Jesse video that everyone should definitely watch. Um, but uh, probably link the show notes below. But if you like that, what was interesting about his video was that it was less. I mean, that actually was about kind of how. Like how much more credit the God of War series right. deserves than it's currently getting, just due to a change of zeitgeist and people, you know, like people endlessly spinning their wheels about like how games should be art and getting all wrapped up and insecure yeah, about like, you know Roger like, Ebert's ghost. Like I feel like yeah. if the new God of War game wasn't a God of War game, people would not be shitting on the old God of Wars because no. that's true. For it's sure. not connected sure. by a franchise. There's nothing. There's no reason to compare them. And they're just, I mean, they're just, just looking Jesse for said. an excuse to sound like this one's better. Yeah, yeah. I would. I mean, as Jesse very well painted, people have simply just forgotten what happened or never played a lot. Like you'll hear like game commenters today. Oh my god, I fucking hate these people. They come out. I mean, Jesse made a very. You know, we're just reiterating his case. So go yeah. watch his video. But it's just like they come out. They're like, 
oh man, this is so much better than the character Kratos was way back in the day. It's like, oh, w- uh, so your experience with it? No, no, I haven't played any of them. Right, oh, right, yeah. Uh, Very Because, right. like, the Very. big, what, uh, like, and again, like Jesse points out in that video, like, the whole, like, you read mm-hmm. the original reviews for the OG God of War, because I remember when it came out, because I'm an old fart, and I remember yeah. reading about it, and like, oh man, Dave Jeff making the game and all this shit. Everyone was like, this is like Devil May Cry with an incredibly good story. That was right, like the elevator right. pitch for the OG God of War. At, God of War 1 had a great story, yeah. Better than Devil May Cry 1. Oh, yeah, definitely, fuck yeah. Definitely. So, like, it actually had, like, uh, character motivation and, 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 and depth and complexity, which... And, and, and everyone was like, this is why this game minute. is so good. It has everything. And then I, later on... I feel on, a meme brewing. Oh, I feel a meme oh, brewing. Oh, no. Wait, wait. Oh, Kratos, Kratos is like, he's holding, like, his dead wife and daughter's body. And he's like... It was supposed to be my job to fill your dark no, soul with, with light. war. <laughs> no, not light with what? See, I, I made I made a twist on it. Oh. It's God of War, oh. not God oh. of Demon Cry. Oh, uh, what, that's is my it? joke. Oh. Thank you. Uh, okay, it was a I'll terrible joke. Paycheck. I don't like it. Uh, it, was, it was the worst. But yeah, no, it's it was good. It was it was a good video, and it and it kind of is yeah. on point because a lot of the times you, the new stuff in the franchise is automatically classified as the betterer. Uh, by mm, some people, mm, you know, because like, especially in games, that's why we need remasters and stuff. Because like, well, the old stuff's too old. We got to make it more accessible yeah. and newer. Disgusting. This is very s- specific to video games, but like the the, the whole mm, graphics mm. thing needing to be updated for people to even think about giving a shit. It people just... think about that about movies to a degree as well, but yeah, it's mostly games but for sure. It's not really because like movies. I mean, I guess movies st- always had like. You know, they never really changed the frame rate or or increased. Yeah, yeah. The, right. the only thing they increased was like uh, you can put things on Blu-rays now, but you can still turn like old. What are what are the millimeters? Like a hundred thousand millimeter film. Thirty-five. <laughs> uh, right. You can also what. like put things in mm-hmm. CGI now instead of like making puppets or stuff like that's that. That's true. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you look at like old like like sixty sci-fi and stuff. It's hard. Like some people have a hard I mean, time. Like. Y- you know, yeah, is the yeah. Gorn really that threatening? It's like, come on. Guys, uh, come on. Well, <laughs> that's just terrible acting. But I mean, you know, things things like um, uh, uh, Citizen Kane, for example. Like, I don't think people look at that movie and think to themselves, like, man, this looks dated, because of the artistry of the thing. It like really like the just the cinematography and the clear. Like, I've actually watched this movie a lot, so I'm, I'm not talking out of my ass like people always do about, like, oh, this isn't Kane, it's so good. I actually have studied this film quite a bit, and I'm quite, it, it really deserves all the praise it gets. Um, and so, like, that's in an artistic way, it stands up, as opposed to, <clears throat> I mean, what I would argue about, like, like, a uh, pixel based Final Fantasy, or even one like a Final Fantasy VII versus like the Final Fantasy XV right. struggle for photorealism. I think uh, movies, and, like the seven remake film and stuff. just ages yeah. more gracefully than video games do, and that's just because like, yeah, it's still true. real life, you know, like mm-hmm. you're still, mm-hmm. it's it's like a very low resolution recording of real life versus, hey look, it's like seven polygons with like a yeah. 512 sure, like, image slapped on it. I, I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure mm-hmm. I'd still enjoy watching like the Back to the Future movies just as much as I did when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. Though I mean, those are those like e- the the special effects in those are actually pretty great and hold yeah. up pretty well to this day. Like I mean, the they lightning invented effects a lot and the props of and stuff. Effects for that time, anyways. I think the thing is like like when when people say movies are too old to watch, I'm I just about... realized there is definitely going to be a resurrection of the Back to the Future series without question. Oh, one of, of these course. Days. Oh, yeah. Will, with I with hadn't Marty, even thought of that. Marty is now going to be an old professor. <gasps> He'll be the professor. He'll be old. And oh my be god! Like, Hello, I'm old and now I'm smart. Here I built <laughs> another fucking, DeLorean. The, that is probably the series that will be most fucked up by, like, reinvention and, like, wow. doing more because it's so reliant on time travel. <clears throat> and, like, everything was really packaged in those three movies. I can't wait for yeah, that to show up on Netflix in a year or two. Marty Sheen's too shaky, though, or whatever his name is. Uh, I am frightened. He's got, the, he's got the, the shakes, whatever that's called. It, 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 another thing that's, like, just happened was the, mm-hmm. the, there was an announcement for a Thundercats Ah! We were just talking about this, oh. and it it looks it looks um like, like every other cartoon out there at the moment. It's literally Steven Universe. Can we, can it's we Steven just Universe time. Adventure Time? Is okay, it KO? All yeah, of them, yeah. All can of we them. can we say officially that Cal Arts has ruined cartoons? Like, I mean, they have 
their legacy is it's too much. It's simply too much. I would say point. at this point, Cal Arts is a franchise that has been ruined. Oh shit. It, uh, it, yep. Okay, just I just want to I just want to say something like I really mm-hmm, dislike mm-hmm. the art style. I'll say that like uh, even in motion mm-hmm, is just mm-hmm. like uh, I don't like it. However, I don't want to knock the series. Uh, out before I've even seen it because like it could have like good writing or something mm-hmm. like I am uh, I am I only don't commenting I, I I completely <laughs> do not care how good it is it is a reboot I'm tired I'm tired what of is, things Tom? coming back I want to hear Tom slay I, I, Queen I, 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 I mean kill these fucking necromancers so they, these skeletons stop coming back I can't I can't oh, get no. through the catacombs I thought you liked skeletons <laughs> like we're not the target audience though guys. That's so fine. I don't care. Opinion fine. Really, I'm, your opinion I'm doesn't so, matter. So, 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 that's not fair to say. My opinion is everything. I'm but on Tom, the internet. My opinion means everything. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, I was gonna, I was gonna be more generous yeah. and say I don't, I don't. Oh, I'm okay. not judging the writing. I'm just judging the art style. But yeah, I think I'm just, there's right, right, right. We can separate those. I mean, after the really good 2011 reboot, how can you just turn around and turn it into this? Like, was there a reboot in 2011? It was amazingly good. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wait. Uh, well, interesting. So cats? actually. Yeah, Thundercats, and it was yeah. it was, was it so the Japanese anime one or whatever. Yeah, it yeah. was kind of anime style. Like. It was yeah. like it was gorgeously animated. Had amazing dude. There was a super fucking amazing episode because it was like mm. mostly a continuous storyline, uh, but then they had like short one off episodes. And there was one episode that was super cool, and it's been a while since I've watched it. But mm. uh, it was about like Lionel's like all like depressed and shit. He's like sad boy because like Lionel. shit's going bad, and like mm. he f- just he f- comes on this race of like small little flower people, and they mm. only have twenty four hours to live their entire life is in 24 hours Whoa. so he meets one of these characters as a newborn and throughout the day he sees him like trying to use his short little life to make a better like impact for his people and that like holy rein- shit that it reinvigorates him to like keep going forward and fighting and it's like the fucking sickest concept that sounds fucking incredible it's so holy good shit. dude it's it's fucking great and then they come out and they're like what if we just made teen titans go furry edition and i'm like <laughs> i'm so fucking angry <laughs> hey, oh, hey teen oh, titans thing about, go, i like I, more I, than this because it has an original art teen, style I, right. I give it more credit the, the whole thing about like we're not the target audience <laughs> uh-huh. um i don't aren't it's we though that, I, I, no well i mean it kind of, I think the, the, the I target think... audience the target the audience don't is, remember is gonna, it's gonna be uh, for like they don't little have kids to. but okay, okay. it's also gonna be like hey guys remember how mm-hmm. old you are now you can relive how old you are by Thundercats again. Yeah. Well, you know what I would say? I would say, well, Mage, you don't know that it's not a more mature show with an older audience in mind, so maybe we should all wait, thing, and maybe you should of, die. The thing oh, about no. it, though, is that <laughs> stuff like, like, it's just, it's just, I'm Ready not, Player like... One, Ready Player One, Thundercats, everything coming back, it just makes me not like uh, the well, things that they're yeah. originally attached to. I'm sick and tired of reboots and remakes and rehashes and reintroductions mm-hmm. of old yeah. things that I haven't experienced, or maybe I have experienced, I just, and it just makes yeah, me like, yeah. okay, now I will never want to look at Thundercats because of this fucking shit. I, yeah, it, like, just, re- it just, everything that gets rebooted go- go- goes mm-hmm. into a vault in my, my mind brain yeah. where mm-hmm. it's it's like, this is bad because it came back and I hate it and I never want to see it and I hate everything associated <laughs> with it and if I see anyone enjoying it, I'm just going to spit <laughs> right in their eye. Okay, I just want to say, I'm not discrediting your disappointment. Like, I, I fully mm-hmm. agree. Like, if someone t- took something I really liked when I was a kid and rebooted into shit, I mean... <clears throat> I have never girls. seen it. But, um... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't seen it either, but, like, the, the thing is, I guess it's just... Yeah, I'm I'm also tired of uh, the reboots. Like, if they wanted to do their completely own original weird kooky thing, just just do it with, like, a new IP. Why do you have to reboot Thundercats and make this thing? Like, of course people are not going to be happy. And, like, the new if, you, if your target audience is, like, new kids that haven't seen the show before, then just make an original show. They're rerun not going to care. The original yeah, that's, show. that's what I'm thinking. I think where, how much money did is the reruns the go? Reruns are so fucking easy and cheap. You just do those yeah. so much better. You know, that is a really good point. Like, if this... Because this is all about making a safe bet and, like, right, trying right. to, like, make more money off the franchise. Why, why, why not spend just re- any money making yeah. a new show? Just... Just put all the money where it actually matters, where all the money comes from for these fucking shows anyway. Merchandise sales. Just re-air Thundercats 2011 and drop more merch. Or re-air the original, because everyone has memories of that. 
But those are old and they look gay. Oh, it makes me feel weird in my penis, it's and the, that's not that's, good for me. That's just the thing that gets me. Like, oh, it isn't. It, but it, the old Thundercats is in four three resolution aspect ratio. We can't air that. Would be laughed out of town. <laughs> I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll just kill you. If you think <laughs> just about that. just look, mirror just look, mirror the us edges. YouTubers, just play the episode, us just YouTubers the have figured out the solution for airing four three. All you do is zoom in on another layer and blur it out. So then you have a sixteen by nine. That's, yeah, it works. It well, works. You could have a funny little uh, side things, pillars. Uh, drawn, yeah, just drawn just little side draw things. the 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 t- the uh, Thundercats roar characters as your border, and then just air the right. original. Right, that could be the whole show. Yeah. Takes place in the border of a normal Thundercats episode. Go. Just imagine, guys. Remember, it's just think about all the hilarious epic meme references. There's going to be like to the '80s into like old cartoons in this incredible new show, Thundercats. Roar. Oh, it's going to be great! Oh, all right, I, I know that I'm I'm reach. I, like I don't know. I haven't seen the show yet, but I, I do feel that you can both one have fatigue for reboots and two also sincerely, you know, determine if a show is good or bad. As well, it comes oh, out. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm sure. I mean, the thing, I'm sure you can. Yeah. Like, Regardless, Two Titans Go is like one of those things where people yeah, hate it's actually it good, just mostly. because. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's mm-hmm. not the same as Teen Titans, but okay, it's I'm... it's actually okay and it's kind of fun. Mm-hmm. No, no, okay. Like I, I like the, <laughs> the original Teen Titans, and I wanted to give Teen Titans Go a shot because when I first saw designs, I kind of liked them. They're cute and chibi, sort of like oh, that's neat, kind of you know that that sort of thing. Uh, it wasn't the same, and I didn't expect it to be the same. But I watched the show, I watched several episodes, and I really didn't care for the humor. I guess. Um, Sure, a lot of it sure. was very mean spirited, and that's what I dislike. I mean, what? No, what are you talking about? What was mean spirited? <laughs> I don't buy that. That, they, they like... that episode with the uh-huh. pie, mo- then Mother May Pie or something. What was wrong with that? I don't remember any mean spirited humor in that. Uh, the, like, I hated the song. The song. Three of the Teen ass. Titans got cooked into a pie, and then like Cyborg and and Beast Boy ate them. But like that was a <laughs> joke. So I like, don't. The... I don't like. I don't like. I didn't like it. I don't like that sort of humor. Uh, I know. Oh, I understand I mean, that people okay. find okay. it funny, but for me personally, I really didn't like right. the All humor right. of the show. And because the show relies heavily, like solely, on its humor, I didn't like the yeah, show. I mean, mostly, yeah. Mm. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Fine. The thing hey, is, l- the thing l- is, the people that usually hate Teen Titans Go hate it on a very surface level. If you watched it and you didn't like it, then that's fine. But most people, uh, I, I think, agree. I've I never agree. given it a shot because, but, but what happened to the my ones that I grew up with? Where did they go? Oh, yeah, yeah I feel like uh, same with the Power of Ghouls reboot. I also watched a few episodes because I wanted to see. It's, mm, I don't think I reached like the few episodes that people were really, uh, you know, uh, talking about, mm-hmm. like the ones that, like, with the with the twerking and whatnot. But I've seen quite a few episodes. I'm sorry, did you say twerking? Yes, there was twerking in the Powerpuff yeah. Girls reboot. Wait, yeah. wait, the the, t- the Powerpuff Girls of these like oh, six year old yeah. children yeah. and twerking. I, What's the? That was awful. I yeah. haven't seen the I show, but I've seen I think bits of like this is how terrible this is. Yeah, I yeah. haven't seen I um, haven't seen the show, but I think the right. context is okay. like there's some sort of <laughs> villain maybe, and they're like they're, then they're kind of drugged, and then like the the what? Twerk. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. We're talking about drugged children twerking. Okay, but like I'm just I'm just. Okay. guessing that they're drugged or like the illusion to being drugged. What? Okay, all right. Nate, all right. Do, do you know there's there's a whole like conspiracy in that show that one of the uh-huh. one of the artists for the show has a self insert of himself and oh, made him yeah. the so love interest like, for no, Blossom. No, 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 about that. No, no, Who's the no, love interest no, no. Yeah. Blossom? No, guys, right? guys, guys, no. Like it came out okay. that like the artist people were making a joke and they made that character without the person actually being aware. So it was meant to be as an okay. inside joke. He he didn't so do we all it got himself. Pranked. Okay. Okay. Right. So, well, that's pretty hilarious. <laughs> there's 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 a ton of 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 disdain. It's interesting. We're talking about all these shows, right? And like mm-hmm. they're they 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 run the gamut of like we don't know how good they are. We they're, they're good or they're not good. Uh, but they're all symptoms of a terrible disease that is that is infected popular culture, which is it's much safer to just rehash what we've already done than to dare go into uncharted waters. It's it's I just want to finish my point when I started with the pop Girls. Okay. Anywho, like, yeah, so mm-hmm. I, I've seen a bit, it, like, it's it's not as terrible as people make it out to be, however, it's still pretty bad. Uh, I mean, like, I okay. dislike it, but that's my personal opinion. Some people might find it good, but it's not, it's not, it doesn't have that charm, I, I, I guess. But it's, it's really not, yeah, okay. like, the end of the world, you know? It's not the end uh, of the world, but, like... 
there's a reason people get so upset because yeah, like you and know, as as um, much as I don't agree with the people who react badly to Teen Titans Go, I totally get why they would have such a reaction when it's a completely different sort of show about, but with the same name as the one that they remember, which okay, was now that, like, you know, yeah, but like now speaking about franchises and being ruined and stuff, well, with Teen Titans mm-hmm. Go, as much as like people like to dislike it, it hasn't ruined the franchise in terms of like business and stuff because apparently it's making a lot of money well, for sure, CN. Sure. However, with the pop, this is the films, only show they it is ruining. Show, I, th- yeah. I, th- I think it is ruining the ruining the franchise because it's not making a lot of money, and I'm not sure why they're still making it. Well, episodes. okay, I'm I- not I've sure. I'm, I might be wrong. Maybe they are making a lot of money or enough money. Here's here's a serious question on this front, though. Okay, so the Teen Titans like show, like I never read the. I know there's it's based on the comic books. I never read them so they're completely irrelevant to me and also powerpuff girls was like mostly like just a show i know it had been it, there was like an actual anime may have it and stuff a while back but like it, they were mostly they were what they were they like were the one show well. okay yeah. but like so when we talk about ruining a franchise like for example does it ruin the franchise of teen titans to make teen titans go when like frankly the series simply would have remained dead Without it, I, so is right. it the way I see or... ruining yeah. franchise is that mm-hmm. it's uh, you can see it from like a money perspective. In which case, mm-hmm. loads oh, of yeah, terrible things ha- are completely fine uh, because they make money, and the franchises aren't ruined in that sense. Mm-hmm. But like the way I think about it is that it's a personal thing. If you feel like your enjoyment or your like the, it, you know, something yeah. about. Yeah one of the things in a franchise is spoiling the others in some way and making you feel bad when you think about the yeah, thing okay. as a whole. Another, you know, like, another... oh man, that's, that would be the perfect series of movies and, uh, unless they, they and, mm, and mm. you know, that, that one right there ruins a lot of them. Yeah, I another agree. thing I, I think is like from the consumer perspective, it's about the legacy of the show. Teen Titans, um, Teen Titans was very much beloved, and although people really, really wanted like a sequel or a continuation or just you know to finish the the fucking series because it wasn't finished, um, people remembered it fondly, and they were very you know and they liked it a lot. But now, uh, whenever people think about Teen Titans, they can't help but think about Teen Titans Go as well, and the fondness just sort of like gets si- uh, pushed to the side and like the anger and the disappointment takes first place so the legacy of the series is now ruined because teen titans go exists yeah it it's really gross how like something that has fans and followers is like as long as it's you know it 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 has like a like people who regard it fondly as long as there's that it will eventually be you know exploited for money down the right. road, unless you have an author like the mm-hmm. guy who made Calvin and Hobbes, who like explicitly forbade any adaptation of his work, and so that is Indeed. like super beloved jam. because no movie has come around to fucking ruin it for everyone. It's just Not perfect yet. forever. <laughs> and I mean, until yeah, his copyright expires in eighty years, and like some like fucking brain in a jar has been waiting since the no. the late seventies is like finally. I didn't can make my CGI for... Calvin and Hobbes movie. I, I, isn't that recently occurring for like the Catcher in the Rye? Um, I forget the, the name of the guy who wrote that. I thought that happened. Like they were. Ta- I know he expressly forbid the thing to happen, and I believe he's still alive. Uh, I can't fucking remember his name off. J.D. Salinger. Uh, J.D. Salinger. That's the one. Um, I don't know. Whatever. Just just throwing that out there. Uh, well, I mean, when I think about these questions, like, legacy and stuff, that's a fair point. But, like, uh, there's there's two different ways things can be ruined in my mind. Like, uh, Final Fantasy comes to mind a lot, and I'm sure I'll discuss that a bunch in this in this podcast. But, like, so there's, there's two different things going on with Final Fantasy. One, there's the current, constant, ever-changing Final Fantasy series that itself, like, is still being developed and, like, never stopped from, like, the 80s when it started. So, like, you could definitely say that, like, Final Fantasy as a series has been ruined because they continue to put out, you know, like, worse products. I mean, I know a lot of people like 15, like, I'm, that doesn't even matter. But, like, you can make a case along those lines. But then, just as, as one example, there is the specifically Final Fantasy VII. And so Final Fantasy VII exists as one game that came out at one time. But then they made sequels and prequels and side stories and a million different things and books and visual novels and all kinds of crazy shit, as well as they are currently working on the remake of the game. So 
the game itself, like, so the Final Fantasy series is one franchise that you might consider ruined by later games that are actually changing what the Final Fantasy series actually is. But Final Fantasy VII, it is what it is at that time. You know, like, if they, if they, they updated it for, like, uh, there's like a PC release or whatever. There's there's updated stuff. The remake will obviously be a huge change. They've added lore with all the side games. But that original game is what it is. And it will never be different as long as you have a copy and don't lose your fucking copy. I'm going to protect mine like the fucking sacred tomb. Um, so, like, has the for like has the legacy of Final Fantasy VII been ruined? Is, is like, I think the answer is, like, to the public, Yes. Because everybody thinks about, well, like, Zack Fair and Crisis Core right. and the it's Turks already, and all these already side stories. All these other things. I think, to me, like, if I was going to define, like, the, mm-hmm. like what this would be, like, what, yeah. what like, ruining a franchise is, I think it's, like, either mm-hmm. the erosion or uh, negligence of the artistic merit of a property. I think that, that mm. pretty much yeah. sums it up. You know, like, either through, like, continued, like, uh, iterance, like, the, the original mm-hmm. idea that, like, attracted people to in the first place gets kind of lost in the shuffle... Or, yeah, like, it's yeah. just blatantly ignored for a crazy, like, left turn. Usually both of these are done with monetary uh, hopes from, from corporations and stuff who never really and understood you know the merit it, of the franchise to begin with. You know what comes to mind for this, though? I think about, like, if someone today says, like, I've heard about Final Fantasy VII, let me get into that thing. Like, that person will experience not what was intended when the first game came out. Sure, you know? unless they, they start Maybe the they'll beginning. start... If they start, mm-hmm. but see, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say that, like, for me, as, like, a, a an old fan of the series, like, what I do in my brain, I've played almost every of the compilation games, and I, I'll play the remake, I'm sure, too, just to find out what's going on. But, like, in my mind, I simply discard everything that happened outside of the original game. Uh, now, it's unfortunate, because things like Cloud's personality, and lo- because of how great and interesting like a character Cloud is, and how nuanced and how, how amorphous he was, even in his old game, it's given people like Nomura an excuse to depict him, you know, in ways that I would argue he should not have been depicted in, like, subsequent games and prequels and stuff. Um, so, like, I definitely can't help but have the character as a monolith tainted in my own mind. Uh, but if someone could just play the original game and ignore everything that happens, the que- but the, the reason is, how would they know to do that? Right. They wouldn't know to do um, that. They, they had no the fucking idea. Going in, you have I no s- idea. Yeah. I, I still... It's hard to, to like, say that a franchise can be, like... I've never played any of the Final Fantasy like... games, by the way. Okay. I just want to say... And I've been, I've been curious about playing um, Final Fantasy VII specifically, but there was, like... A Steam sale that I didn't take opportunity, I didn't didn't take advantage of of all the well, Final <laughs> Fantasy games. Um, yeah. I really wanted to play like as many games as I could, you know, in order to see what's up and stuff. Okay. But I well, y- your boy Hippo did play it and was just talking when you interrupted him. So let's see what he has to say. <laughs> I, I've been waiting to say this for a while because you were talking as well. So I guess interruption. So let's just interrupt continues. Hippo, not me. That makes sense. M- Major's on the if you can't beat him, join him wagon. When it comes to interrupting people, she's she's had enough of being this interrupted. Is, this is dealing this is, it back out. This this is all Nate's fault. Let's agree. Sure, I, I agree. Uh, <laughs> Gabe, what were you saying? I forgot. Oh, well, no. <laughs> uh, any thoughts on the legacy of Final Fantasy VII as someone who's oh, recently oh, played uh, that I game? And, um, yeah. the, the 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 idea. I think I don't agree that a franchise can be ruined for the public necessarily. Mm. Like you know, you with may, education you... they can figure out what's good and bad. Probably that's probably true. Yeah, because like, get that education? If, if if nobody yeah. plays the original Final Final Fantasy VII in the way that it was intended, um, mm-hmm. again, but they play like the remake and they like yeah, that, yeah. um, there's an argument to may- be made that they're not getting like the true experience because right maybe the the, the mm-hmm. remake is not as good. I mean, it may be good, no, but we don't know. No, why do you say it? Oh, no, what I'm saying what? is what I'm saying is <laughs> that I think. The franchise-ness of the fact that this is a remake of another thing, but they're different, mm. is what is the problem here, because mm. they may enjoy, they may prefer, on a base level, human, like, uh, this is what I feel at yeah, the very core yeah. of my being, they may prefer whatever the remake becomes p- to the original game, mm-hmm. but if they were not franchise-connected, they could just see them as two different things. 
There's Final see, Fantasy that's... VII, the game. It's an old yeah, thing. Yeah. And then there's this new thing that is, you know, not supposed to replace it, but it is implicitly being re- a replacement because of it sharing the name and being that's a remake. Exactly it. That's exactly Which is exactly. why I think and, franchises, know... like, destroy the legacy mm. of things for mm. people I, who come into them I, later. I, well, I um, unless see... they do... Ex- like a lot of research to to you know to unless they put in a lot of effort to sift through all of the you know the updated new things that have muddied the waters. Okay, I wanna I wanna quickly say I've been playing Shin Megami Tensei, and that's like mm-hmm. uh, oldest balls franchise. I will say it's like older than yep, Pokemon yep. from my knowledge. <laughs> and um, like I played the the fourth game, and I started playing the Apocalypse, and I I did a lot of digging like with, with the with the history of the Shin Megami Tensei because I wanted to know mm-hmm. because it, it fascinated me that like something this old existed and it just I, anywho I liked it and yeah, cool, uh, cool. from my knowledge it's the franchise was never sort of ruined by any game and all the spin offs were either mildly successful or became Persona which like super successful so like. I th- I think it's an example of a franchise this that's like hasn't been ruined yet despite its very long lifespan and although I I know that some people oh sorry yeah yeah and I'll, I'll, I know some people have been sort of complaining about the newer games for some reasons like oh they yeah they do, make- don't a lot of old school fans don't they say that like they're mad that the focus has gone to like Persona and that like that side of the Shin Megami Tensei well, I mean, like, I, I've heard some degree of that at yeah. some yeah. point was but then they revived uh, Shin Megami Tensei with Shin Megami Tensei Four and Apocalypse and there's going to be a new Shin yeah, Megami yeah. Tensei on the Switch. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it hasn't died and has it actually has been sort of revived and a lot of people because of Persona are turning, you know, their focus on Shin Megami Tensei because they want something of yeah, similar but true. not the same. Like me, because I started with, I sort of started with Persona 4, um, that MMO game that I talked about aside because I wasn't even, I didn't even know it was a franchise at that time. Anywho, but like, yeah, I started with Persona. I really like Persona 4. Uh, I couldn't play Persona 5. Still can't. I want to. But yeah, and I, I instead I turned to Shin Megami Tensei because it seemed like, you know, something I'd like. I, at first I was sort of a little bit turned off because of the, um, even in the fourth game, which is pretty recent, and Apocalypse also. Uh, recent enough, I think, uh, but they still had like the sprites rather than like 3D models and stuff, and I, it sort of feel like very clunky and sort of like bloated, not bloated, but like... Um, <laughs> Very visually heavy, I guess. Not heavy. Um, over overloading. Like, not sure how to say. Well, it. so uh, are are you saying that like you, what you're saying is that like the games that some people might consider ruining something actually can bring people into the fold and expose them to you know uh, like aspects of the series that maybe the hardcore fans would say like is the real experience or mm, something along those lines. No, I'm I'm saying no. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> what I was trying to say is just like. Originally, I was sort of turned off by the graphics that kind of looked very outdated, but then I played the game and I really liked the story and the setting and the idea and the mechanic. I think the heart of the Shin Megami Tensei still lives on through its franchise. The Persona thing aside, it's become its, it's, become its own thing, um, very much so. It's like very different games. Like, um, but I think Shin Megami Tensei has always had that core sort of fight between good and evil, but not like, like, I mean, the the demons and the angels and the apocalypse happening and, like, world going to hell. It, it always seemed to have had that theme. I think originally it started, like, on a small scale-ish. Now it's becoming bigger and bigger over time. I'm not too certain because there's so many games. But, yeah. And okay. uh, it's just, like, I think it's still a good franchise, although some people are grumbling about the changes. However, like, you can't, you know, remake the exactly same game each time. Whenever a new game is made, you know, changes are going to happen. And some changes, I think, are made for the better. They're like, sometimes But if balances. the changes are bad, then it's fair to criticize them, right? Oh, yeah, that's fair. I mean, but I, I haven't seen, um, like, legit criticism o- above, like, oh, it's different than what I remember it to be. Uh, well, I, I mean, I, there was I, one, like, there, there's, like, a legit one that, like, the overworld map was very, very confusing and hard to navigate on the fourth, but they improved upon it on the fourth um, game Apocalypse, which was meant to be a DLC, but it became its own thing. It became too big uh, to be just a DLC, so they made mm-hmm. a separate game out of it. That's what I've heard anyway. But yeah, my point um, is, it's a good franchise, and I'm, I'm happy, I'm happy to experience it, and I'm happy to say that it hasn't gone to shit yet. <laughs> Hopefully it won't. Hmm. Hmm. I um, I don't like this idea 
that I uh, am like guilty of sometimes that mm -hmm. um if you don't like the new thing in a franchise you're a grumpy old man and you you're you're just looking back in the nostalgia goggles and mm -hmm. all that cuz like I definitely have done that for a few things um but I I don't like the idea that it's okay to be that either mm. like um sometimes new things are just good and they're not for me but like I was sure. saying, it's like the franchise has kind of tricked me into ha want needing to have an opinion on it because it's from something that mm -hmm. I used to mm -hmm. like, which was different from a different time. And now this new thing is coming around with the same name and it's the new one. And oh, but it's made for a completely different generation of people and I don't like it. Do I criticize it? Do I get mad? I, I don't really know what to do sometimes. Uh, yeah, just like the God of War game is just made for, like, modern gamers, and so they had to completely like, change the kind of game I, it was, because nobody likes th action th games there's, anymore. There's a case to be made that some things are better than other things, mm -hmm. in terms of, like, the thematic sure, relevance sure. of, like, the, the original game in every franchise is usually the one that makes the most sense, with all the reasons for everything being put there. And then everything after that is some kind of, like, muddying mm -hmm. of the general idea like right, like with right. dark with the dark demon blood series demon souls is like the the most the the perfect like mixture of the way the game was told and what is in the game and the way it's played and everything mm -hmm. and then beyond after that it's sort of shifted in dark souls and then dark souls 2 and then bloodborne and dark souls 3 into something that's just a bit far removed from like you you you're a real human being or a, you're a dead guy mm -hmm. and you're trying <laughs> right. to survive at you you know you've got a realistic ish strength level and you're trying to survive in this harsh world that is fucking going to destroy you but then mm -hmm. in in dark souls 3 it's like you are a super super being from the very beginning and you're really fast you can yeah, dodge yeah. roll uh super good and it's like uh the message and is And that doesn't even different. make sense, because, like, in, in Bloodborne, you're designed to be, like, a speedy, yeah. dashy guy. Yeah. But you're still... You're wearing, like, heavy plate and doing this shit in Dark Souls 3. Yeah, Dark Souls 3 is just sort of... It's not bad, which is the thing. But it's, mm -hmm. like, it's a muddy... It's it's, it's a... It's a removement... Removement of... Uh, <laughs> the core of reason for, like, stuff. So, so what, like, what you're arguing is that, like, there can be an artistic, like... Uh, there can a be an thing artistic that was done in the ideal. original thing that can be diminished as it can, it can go be along. diminished but like yeah, there's no yeah. reason to to think that if it's not perfectly artistically cohesive with gameplay mm. and on or whatever i'm i'm talking mostly about games cuz i don't really sure, watch sure. movies but like um the, you know there there can be that but there's nothing I mean, to say that yeah. you you should like the old one more even if you mm. like the new one because it's a it's a, a game you like more it's yeah, just it's yeah. just always confusing because they're the same franchise. Yeah. And there's different things. Franchises should not exist. They should not. That's I mean, I, I definitely want to say I, a thing about that, but Yeah, I, I, I wanted to, to say something but Okay. Uh, you can go, Nate. <laughs> okay. Uh well I was just gonna say that like so when it comes to uh, like, I, I, my mind keeps going back to Final Fantasy VII as, mm -hmm. like, the main example in my mind. And it's like, so that that is a little different in the sense that, like, the, well, actually, Dark Souls had direct sequels. But, like, there was there was, there was was Final Fantasy VII that had its its own artistic integrity, love it or hate it, you know, whatever it was. It was its own thing. And then you've got, years later, they make Advent Children. It was, like, the first thing that was made for this compilation of Final Fantasy VII, which was followed by many games and whatnot. Like, okay... You could theoretically make a prequel to Final Fantasy VII, which actually they did. There were some animated films that came out before Advent Children. Uh, or there was at least one. I think it was called Before Crisis. That's just like an anime version of what happened in Nibelheim between, like, Zack, Cloud, and Sephiroth. And, like, a prequel that just makes the events of the game into an anime, like, that, that, that's totally fine. Like, that generally doesn't hurt anything and is, and is pretty decent. Now, the problem is, when you make sequels to Final Fantasy VII... Uh, that's when artistic integrity, uh, gets its Achilles heel sliced. Because the entire point of the end of that game was there was a question as to whether or not humanity was going to be wiped out. 
And, like, we don't know the answer to that question at the end of Final Fantasy VII. By making sequels, you... And, and that was the whole point, that we, as the viewers, have to wonder ourselves, are human beings actually a plague on the Earth? It was, a, it was, a, it was about the environment. It was an environmental question. It was about the nature of mankind. Are we deserving of survival? Are we, deserve, are we just a virus on this planet the way Genova was? Or do we actually deserve to live here as part of this ecosystem and this, this world we're on? That is the question asked at the end of Final Fantasy VII, and we do not know the answer, so you are given the homework to spend the rest of your life thinking about the ending to that game. Until Advent Children comes out a couple years later, when they say, nope, everything's fine, humans are cool, don't worry about it, they just got Geostigma. Uh, so, shut the hell up, everybody. <laughs> um, like, bad. Like, no, stop. I, and, I watched then... Advent Children without having any context for any games or anything. And uh -huh. I was young, and I quite liked it. I was like, ooh, shiny, basically. I liked, I liked it at first, too, when I first saw it, because I also was just like, ooh, shiny. Because I hadn't really thought seriously about what it all meant. But then, as the years went on, I, I did, and I am where I am now. But, like, I so that's, that's so just one example. I Vincent Valentine. <laughs> He was. He didn't do much in that movie. I, I guess he was so in there. He's, he's all right. I did, I did do a full aesthetic. cosplay. I did a full cosplay of Vincent Valentine in my youth. Oh, uh, so made cool. the made his gauntlet. Made his whole thing. And there's there's a picture of it. There's pictures of it around. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I worked to an anime convention. I worked to Anime Boston. Uh, I wanted to make my my larger point here, and it's specifically about uh, and it's in, 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 in in keeping with what Gib was saying. It's why I hate franchises. And it's it's this. It's a whole bunch of things. But it's any time that is spent on making a sequel to a game is time that could instead be made making like a new thing with original ideas. And there are absolutely sequels that are good, um, that improve various things, but I I'm, I'm approaching from this from the lens of like, uh, like how much intellectual content really in the story. I know a lot of people don't care about fucking stories and games, but I do. Um, and I, and you know, the whole Gazam Kutzferk of story working with gameplay, blah, 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 all that bullshit. And it's like when when you have to sit down as like a game designer, because I, I have been a game designer many times. I know what it's like, uh, even though I'm, I don't do it right now. Like, you have to sit down and think about, okay, what's the whole basis of our game going to be? And you really have to go through an intense struggle to come up with something original. Um, and that's where the most of the in intellectual labor is done when you're making a game. It's when you come up with the concept and then like all the shit that comes afterward is all like filling in the blank. So that's, you know, that's how you make your game. So like, uh, you know what, th this brings to mind when I, when I was doing the, um, the Weebcast <clears throat> with, with Digi and the boys and we would watch episode one of like every anime that came out in a season. I loved doing that because episode one of every single show that's ever made for the most part is interesting or absurd or just it stands out generally in some way. But the thing is, watching another 11 episodes of that thing generally for most shows is not worth it because you're not getting that like uh, that that spark that's like leading into a whole show when you watch the whole thing. You get all the ideas presented in episode one, and then they string it out for 11 episodes in some way. And, you know, a lot of the times that makes sense because it's a complicated narrative, whatever. But the point I'm getting at is what I really liked about that, and the good thing I get from that is when you're forced to, like, start over and start from the very beginning and come up with a unique premise, that's where most interesting things that I like in a show and generally in a video game as well, like, are done. It's at that first stage. So to go on and spend a million fucking years reinventing the wheel and trying to come up with sequels to games to just, like, refine art or refine gameplay or, you know, make a sequel to a show and, like, find excuses to, like, uh, have, like, new characters show up in season two. Like, oh, because we didn't mention them because they were off doing a secret mission, but now they're back and here they are, main character of season two. Um, I hate all that shit. It's terrible. It generally... I'm not gonna say every time, but a lot of the time it violates in, in artistic integrity. And and like to all the things that the the big push right now of like uh, of doing like the big remake thing, the the reboots and whatnot. It's just like I I do not blame studios for doing it. They've got to make money. They've got you know bills to pay. What I hate is when people just are content with it and accept it. And are just like, yeah, this is a perfectly good use of, of everyone's time. Like this Thundercats reboot. Maybe it will be great. I don't know. But I don't want people to think that it's a good thing to do to spend all their time making a, a new Thundercats show when they could instead be making something actually original. Uh, you know, from the, from the premise up.
Okay, I'm uh, gonna, I still have sure, a point to go say. Go for it. <laughs> um, so, so like, oh, what I wanted to bring up a franchise that I also like, um, Dragon Age. I really, really like Dragon Age. It's mm-hmm. one of my favorite franchises, I guess. Um, I really love the first game, and the second game got bashed to the ground because people hated it mm. so much because of the changes and like, um, not just the changes, like it was lacking severely um, in a lot of things, and like it was obviously a very rushed project, and it looked, it, it felt more like a DLC. And it didn't connect so well story wise with mm-hmm. it. like there were a lot of problems. However, I still liked Dragon Age two, as 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 blasphemous as it is to say. I quite liked it. And now after, you know, talking with you guys about all this. Is that I'm the like, one with all the gay minotaurs and stuff? Is that the one? Uh, no, I mean <laughs> No? Okay. Okay, okay, um <laughs> Maybe a little bit. <laughs> okay, Kunari, okay. maybe if you're talking about Kunari. Uh, they're not Minotaurs, but they are people with giant horns in their heads, most okay. of them. Yeah. Uh, but is there a big gay one? Is there a big gay one? It's in the third game, not the second one, maybe. Ah, okay. My apologies. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So um in the second that's game That's the one Nate's interested in, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's the one I want to know about. Okay. Uh okay. he's called Iron Bull and yes, I I need I, Iron Bull? I, oh damn. <laughs> That's hot. Uh, <laughs> now, now I need to. I need to. I need to. I need oh, to cr- no. go back to my game because I remember I made a character specifically <laughs> to romance that guy. So <laughs> <laughs> now we're talking. Yeah. Yeah. Nate did too. It's cool. called Nate Vestman. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I was. I was gonna. I was gonna. I was gonna. He was originally. I was going to originally romance mm. him, but then Cullen happened, and oh my heart, because 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 of the story <laughs> this guy has had throughout the whole games. Like in the original game, I played as a female mage. And uh-huh. um, you meet you him, do. and he has a crush on you in the original game, and Aww. yeah, that's really cute. And then like you meet him in the second <laughs> game, and uh, he's sort of like uh, not exactly an antagonist, but he, but like if you play a mage, he's not really happy with mages at that point um, for okay. a lot of reasons. Oh, wait, you see that? He's that like ranger guy who hates magic, and wants to kill everybody, right? No, right? no, 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 the right no, guy? no. Does he a... wear a bandana? Does he wear a bandana? No, he has fluffy okay. feather things. Like he's I'm like a captain wrong. of me. stuff. Anywho, okay. <laughs> so yeah, so the ranger guy is a DLC character, which I never got because I dislike him severely, and he oh, messes okay. up my game. <laughs> At least how I want to play it, because I want I want uh-huh. people to be as happy as possible, and uh, he he just kind of nopes out of one of the endings of the game, and I like he he forces mm. me to make a choice that I don't want to choose that I don't want. To what, make what does to he make you choose? What's the choice? Uh, Either kill one of my party Straight members. Straight or gay? No, no, no. Either kill one of my party members or, like, he, uh, he gets the fuck out or something like that. I don't remember. Like, he, uh, he, okay, he really okay. he really advocates for the killing of one of my party members. And I'm like, no. I <laughs> like this party member, despite all the fucked up shit he's done. <laughs> so Okay. Anyway, so, yeah. So, like, Cullen in the second game. And in the third game, he's finally romanceable. And I was like, oh, I've been playing female mages for all these games. Wouldn't it be so cool if he f- could finally get it on with, like, a female age? <laughs> Isn't that, isn't that how it was with Tally? You could only romance her in Mass Effect 3 as well or something? I never you could, romance her, in, you could romance her in Mass Effect 2. It, wasn't, it was the first game oh, okay, that you okay. couldn't. Um, gotcha. Yeah. But yeah Mass so... Effect's another good example of that. It was, cause like, mm-hmm. like, it was kind of different because like Mass Effect 2 was way different than Mass Effect 1, but it, mm-hmm. people were generally positive towards it. Like There was like a hardcore yeah, group yeah. of people who played Mass Effect 1 who weren't a big fan of it because like Mass Effect 1 was a role-playing game. The combat was mm-hmm. pretty bare bones uh but like there was like loot and gear and like you everything you killed you had drops and like you could change mm-hmm. your armor and change like all your equipment and stuff and like it reflected things like one of the big memes of mass effect ones you could dress everybody in pink armor and it looked ridiculous because like there were pink armor sets that just were really good like the designs <laughs> were really fucking weird um but then mass effect 2 they changed all of that and it became strictly a shooter with rpg elements uh and the com- oh, well, the combat got yeah. a lot tighter uh, and it was much more fun to actually like have firefights and stuff, which became much more the focus of the game. Uh, but mm-hmm. there were only a couple armor sets, and they weren't like equipment. It was just kind of like rewards you got throughout playing the game. So like everything, mm-hmm. all the RPG stuff was like very streamlined or stripped out entirely in favor of being a shooter with a light leveling progression. Well, you know, 
Uh, but I, I, I still want to make my point. So Dragon Age 2. Wait, Mage, let me just finish. I just want to say on this. It's just that what's interesting about Mass Effect is just that, like, that. so that was always intended to have a sequel. But, like, obviously the reboots, like, that's another that's another story with the with the Andromeda and whatnot. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, on, Dragon Age also, also, I think, you know, they, they also, mm-hmm. it's it's made to have sequels. But, yeah, Dragon Age 2, like, it, it got bashed to the ground and people really disliked it. However, I think, mm-hmm. like, if it wasn't tied to the franchise and had come out of his, his own its own thing... Uh, people would have been as harsh uh, to it as they were. Um, it probably wasn't. But that harshness, though, like, would it have gotten as many sales? No. You know, like, would people pay attention? Yeah. Like, I think the reason they're mad is because they have an expectation. Right. Yeah. That's and the then they get thing. tricked. When, or, you, you know. when you buy yeah. into a franchise, like, a franchise, the reason a franchise even can exist is because it's mm-hmm. formed some sort of identity and expectation right, in right. people's minds. So when you say, we're going to make more of this, they expect more of this not like Indeed. something different Indeed. with the same name and because of with dragon age because they're trying to tell a story throughout multiple games like it's all said within the same time span kind of mo- like right, generally right. and you can see recurring characters and whatnot um you usually don't you can't make like an rpg game into like a first person shooter and then just you know, so seamlessly and tell you know a story i don't think because the fans of the original ones, like the, the that were fans of the RPG part, I'm probably not gonna want to play it as a first person shooter, you know. So you mm-hmm, can't make mm-hmm. too much drastic changes to the formula. Uh, however, you can try to update it and stuff. And I think with Dragon Age Two, I liked the upgrade to the combat, at least as playing as a mage. Um, I'll say that much because I haven't played any other classes because I only play mage. Uh, but yeah, mage as only a- plays mages. No. Yeah, so, um, like, they made the, like, I really liked the combat as a mage in Dragon Age 2, which I think was a nice upgrade, because in the first one, it just, it felt really clunky, and the animation was sort of like, I'm poking someone with a stick, just for, like, with a distance, like, very big yeah. distance, like, I poke yeah, someone yeah. with a stick, and then, like, a lightning bolt comes out, and then, like, hits them, and just, like, it just, like, it looked like it, my character was going, like, Neh. <laughs> it's just so silly <laughs> and so unsatisfying but with like Dragon Age 2 they kind of yeah. like combine like martial arts with the staff so you can do like really cool moves like you, you switch the staff around and like it's, is like, this in first person is this in first person no, no it's a third person, it's third person. No, oh, okay I'm just, I'm just trying to get a picture of what's happening here it's, okay. it's okay. just like, it, like it's a lot more satisfying the combat and like when you melee people within like uh, range as a mage um even that looks cool. Even even if you don't do that much damage, like it's it's really neat. I liked I liked well, okay, the ability okay. to the combat a lot. Okay, so so basically, so not every franchise immediately goes to shit. I like, and there's things to be enjoyed. Okay, well, here's here's my question. I'll just quickly want to say, well, like, is it- Dragon Age Inquisition was the third game, and. I think it was received positively enough. They did a lot of changes that people mm-hmm. heavily disliked uh, because they uh, sort of made it feel like an MMORPG with a lot of little mini quests and uh, very big worlds uh, that kind of felt a little bit on the empty side and just like a lot of little tedious quests here and there, you know, pick up five herbs, kill ten boars or something, you know, those sort of quests mm-hmm. um, to f- make it feel more bloated than it actually is. However... Um, I it didn't it wasn't a deal breaker for me. I didn't have too much of a problem because uh, I'm a great big MMO uh, RPG junkie sort of person. So I I didn't have an issue with that. It didn't. I I like the game regardless, and it's my favorite game of the three. And I I hope they do better with the next game. And I'm really scared because the EA has been fucking up recently. And yeah, Mate, oof. Have you have you considered being a video game YouTuber? Mm. No, I mean, I, I sort of like I did an Undertale Let's Play that I never finished, but uh, no, I don't, I don't wanna. I'm not, I'm not. No, I'm a wee. Well, so many things. She'll, she'll just get that out on the PCP. Just yes. every, every in the middle of every PCP with Mage, we'll not have a game review just out of nowhere. <laughs> I, I I don't play that many games. That I I don't know. Like I usually I usually play like very cute farming Sims or something like that. <laughs> Well, okay. I mean, I, I'm trying to come to, a, like, a, a thoughtful thing to say, to summarize. Like, okay, is it, is it fair to say that franchises are always bad? No, <laughs> no right. It should never here, here's, here's what I can say <laughs> wanna, uh, about, about things. It's, um, no, Mage, pause. The get, the give talk, franchises, goddammit. Franchises, franchises, I, was, I, was, really pa- I was fucking pausing. 
You then you interrupted. Also, you went on about your shit for a while, Nate. I waited a long time. You're absolutely right. (laughs) What we need to do is to Uh stop giving a shit about the names of franchises and start giving a shit about the people behind them. It's it's always the case. It just always is. Even sometimes when it isn't the case, it's the case. <laughs> we when should literally guy, criminalize who... naming movies. We should name them one, two, three, starting with the first movie made the... now and just naming them with numbers forever. The and artist no behind the thing is so much more of a reliable, mm. you know, way to tell the right, the, right. Uh, the the you know whether a game is going to be the sort of thing that you want from a franchise. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The most obvious example is Dark Souls Two in the Dark Demon Blood franchise. Was right. not helmed by uh, uh, Hidetaka Miyazaki like the other games, and mm-hmm. it's not as good in various ways that it was good in the other games. That's a great because point. He, it's a great point. He directed all the other ones, and it's clear that he know he has a very clear vision of what the games should have in them and why things are put there. And so when he's in charge. He know you know you can tell you know before you buy that at least there's going to be a good there's going to be good shit you know I I I, I was maybe... upset with Dark Souls mm-hmm. two, but then hit attack of Miyazaki coming back for Dark Souls three. He made fucking like, Bloodborne okay. or oh yeah yeah he, yeah, he, he made Dark Bloodborne mm-hmm. and Dark Souls three and like okay this time I'm I'm I've never liked the idea of uh, believing something is going to be good before reviews come out. Mm-hmm. I never liked pre-ordering. Pre-ordering is stupid. But um and I didn't pre-order Dark Souls 3, but I had like this idea that if he's there, I feel like it's going to be good and it was. Like fucking Dark Souls 3 uh, was really uh, good. Yeah, well, shit, I just had Oh, like The Godfather. The Godfather won it. Like everyone The Godfather 2 actually won more Oscars than Godfather 1, I think, and that was just another by Coppola, you know? Like if that had been outsourced, like oh, for example, I forget who the director was of American Beauty. Uh like American Beauty 1 is like a legendary film that everybody loves. Uh Dubs. Uh but then Ameri- oh, I mean, this may be a bad example, but American Beauty 2 it is a sequel. It features the character in a small way. I have not seen it. It stars Mila Kunis and it's like it's like a joke. Like, it's a, it's, no, it's just not <laughs> real. Like, if you bought American Psycho 1, uh, and if it, it was a video game, and then you bought American Psycho 2, uh, I mean, no, it's not. Wait, there's an American Psycho 2? There, there is. Starring what? Mila Kunis as, I mean, but that's, you thing, just said so American, bad. You, you said, said American, American Beauty. Beauty. God damn it, American Psycho. There's no beauty involved here. <laughs> okay, I was very, I was Bale, very confused. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, bit. got him. Hashtag gay. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah, there was another, oh, I was gonna say, uh, and another one is like, um, like Hideki Kamiya directed, uh, uh, like, uh, Devil May Cry 1, yep. but then, like, Devil May Cry 2 was by some other asshole, and yeah. it was a complete and nightmare. It was, it was terrible, and this was young and I know me that, before I, think, I knew. I think that's, yeah, yeah. I think that same guy also went on to make Devil May Cry 3 and, like, redeemed himself, I think. I think that's yeah. what happened. I, I thought that yeah. Kamiya came back for 3, and then someone called me up no, on a no. previous Yep. episode and it's like no you're fucking retarded it was the same guy who that's just right. like learned to not suck and i was like oh well i take yeah, back all the things i've said for him for like 15 it's, years it's not a guarantee that's it's, true it's not a guarantee if the same guy is but it's more reliable than seeing the brand name or even seeing the company behind it or like I mean, the publisher here's a, here's an or example. the game studio or the the you know mm-hmm. the, the the team mm-hmm. i mean sometimes the team is just it's it's not the same team even if it's all the same people if it's been like like three decades like with ukulele yeah. most of the old gang came back and it sucks mm-hmm. and it's what just need- because they were out of the that they weren't doing that that yeah, whole thing yeah. for so many years that they had changed and they didn't know what they were doing as much anymore yeah that's a good point okay. uh like uh-huh go ahead i, I want to say like so we can sort of like agree that like um Things like criticizing things just because they're different from how they used to be isn't really a good sort of basis to criticize things, but it is yeah, okay yeah. to criticize things for actual faults that things have. So, like, yeah. basically, mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. take your nostalgia goggles off if you want to criticize new games because you mm. have to consider, like, are they good on their own, you know? Like you gain I think that's definitely it, well, true. Yeah, I, think I mean, a lot of people they they don't do that because they're judging it based on the idea that they want 
a new version of this franchise, and that is what they're being sold, but they're not getting it because it's and, different. And that cuts both ways, though. Like, uh, some people, because they played the old thing, will, you know, be more critical. I think that's most of us here. But then other people have, like, a rose-colored nostalgia glasses, and, like, they'll like they'll see the Final Fantasy VII remake, and, like, I, I grew up myself saying this, and my friends saying, whatever console... Final Fantasy VII Remake eventually comes out on, I will buy. And this was, like, a de- more than a decade ago that me and my friends were, like, saying this shit. Because, like, this, like, obviously it's going to be the best game ever. But, of course, we didn't know that, like, the compilation was coming, man. The compilation. <laughs> and, like, and there were all these directorial issues. Like, the game isn't being worked on. And, like, all these problems are happening in development. Right. And most you know? people still don't. Most people don't, like, fucking you know yeah follow yeah. gaming press and dev logs and all this crazy shit so like they're not gonna know they're just gonna be like oh i remember final fantasy 7 and they're making it again i think this is the problem and there's literally nothing we can do about it except possibly advocate that people change their mindset but i think it's not going to happen the problem is that people stop when they see the name of a thing uh and like the the company behind it possibly even that is probably too much they just see like new marvel movie and they think, okay, going to be great. Or, or you know, something, or like, new Final Fantasy game, okay, it's going to be great. New Kingdom Hearts, okay, it's going to be great. The- but what they need to do is investigate who's directing it, what have they done recently, uh, yeah. you know, I what mean, is the it's, team it's developing a bit much, it? It's a bit much to ask that people yeah. do that for everything. But that's why we I, YouTubers I, can I, bring I think, them that information, I, but you know? I, I think the, the most that I can do, mm-hmm. uh, specifically, <laughs> yeah, for, yeah. To, to quell this problem, is just to be like... I don't even know his name. The guy who made mm-hmm. Calvin and Hobbes. He's a, he's a Bill genius. Watterson. And he's a George scholar. Harrison. Bill George Watterson. George Harrison. That's Bill, Bill, Bill Watterson, Watterson you fucking fools. <laughs> yeah. Don't sully his name. The greatest uh, human Bill, to ever Bill live. Bill Watterson. All I can do is when I when when and if no when I make when. a big <laughs> giant franchise uh, like big <laughs> thing like oh everybody uh-huh. wants to make a movie of my thing. I'm going to say no, and I'm going to write my will. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody will ever touch anything I make, and it'll be great as a result. That's what I want, man. That's mm. what I want. Like, uh, I do yeah, want to okay. say that, like... Uh, Mage, if you were going to say. It, yeah. It's okay to sort of, like, you know, have initial dislike or like of a thing to reaction. Like, you, you can't you can't control your emotions to a thing. Like, so you might have mm-hmm. a knee-jerk reaction. But if you're going to, like... Don't go and pick fights with people over your silly emotions and just, like, think a little bit before you do that. I mean, I... I totally hear you on the mage, but like what I what I'm advocating for is a severe and massive amount of rage <laughs> if you have a well researched opinion at like for example, my feelings on the Final Fantasy VII remake. I feel like I know the score. I, I have done the research. I know and again, I know likely what issues are to be, so I will continue to I've... raise these concerns. But however, when the game is finally before me, I will drop all of that as best I can and attempt to give it a sincere, and he will thorough, out, clean and he will slate. Buy the you collector's know. edition, he'll get the cool cloud statue and you all fucking yeah. do it all yeah i think i think something really important with, with when looking at like franchises and remakes and stuff is that there's there's mm-hmm. a difference you have, you have to understand yourself that there is a difference between saying i don't like this because it's not what i wanted it to be and mm-hmm. this thing is terrible and i hate it because it's possible right. for something to be right. really really good but just not at all what you wanted Mm-hmm. That was what happened with me when Kill La Kill came out. Like, I just had the wrong expect. I went in thinking, like, Agreed. Gurren Lagann 2, here we yep. go! I did the exact that was same thing. That was yep. a huge Yeah, mistake. I didn't have that expectation. Do you know I quite liked the, it. The reason that happened yeah. is because they advertised it as, like, another Gurren Lagann. If you I, watch, like, all, like, the previews and I stuff. I mean, I, I accept responsibility for, you know, I, misreading I it. But, yeah, I mean... It. Like, yeah, at the end of the day, then again, I never seen fault, Gurren Lagann, so you know. Oh my God! <laughs> well, well, I good luck. Okay, well, one episode. Mage, it's Mage, not for me. It's not no, for me. Oh, no, oh, 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 oh. Do do we have to? All right, all right. We're, we everybody, we have to disconnect Mage. We have to hold a vote right now. Kick Mage. Yes or no? Haha, <laughs> you can't. Uh, <laughs> Um, oh, uh, no. Well, how how interesting. So you watched episode one and just didn't like it? Yeah, I think I watched like two, well, or maybe two episodes. Like, go watch, I, go watch best yeah, okay. anime ever, Gurren Lagann Part One and Two. I don't wanna. You can't like. And the, I don't, the more I don't blame you force you. me, the uh, less likely uh, I'll be to uh, watch it. Uh, I, I'm not forcing anybody. Yeah. Blame Tom. It's not me. <laughs> yeah, stop nagging. No. Oh no. I'm don't so be, don't be like everyone's mother. I'm so <laughs> sad now. I have to be Mage's mom on this. <laughs> you know it's funny. Tom is like almost as big a fan of Gurren Lagann as I am. I mean, you know, maybe not as as intellectual oh, <laughs> and no. an analyzer of uh of, I did of like fucking the You like it with your brain. Though. I like it with my heart, okay? That's a I, I remember when I was working yeah, th- yeah, sure. <laughs> when I was working on that video, I remember discussing it with you like the thought of possibly getting you involved. I mean, it just didn't work out that way, but uh, yeah. I remember that came up. That was like was. four 
three years ago at, at some. It was a long time now. Yeah. I yeah. Really Re- remember like Ghost in the Shell coming the next? Man, I can't wait and for like Nate to quotes. release his third video. I know, right? I, I know, right? <laughs> uh, I like the well, memes. Well, guys, so. I, I'm aware. Oh, the, the memes, memes are good. Yes. The me- well, good. Uh, that's pretty good, right? Um, I don't know. Weaponized thickness, not from that video, but you know. <laughs> uh, all right, team. I think we've that actually. I'm actually pretty happy with where we've arrived with this. That yeah. was a pretty decent uh, summary. The issue is just you got to do research, uh, and the problem is that no one ever will. Like the the problem is that the dummies of the world who don't know anything they see like you know, uh, uh, it's Marvel, baby, and they're like, yeah, I, I will give my money to this uncritically and have no. You know, I mean, whatever. Just, uh, just a quick disclaimer a, to people who, like, because we, mm-hmm. we name-dropped a lot of games, and there might be people who are like, oh, you like this game, but there were, like, these faults in it, or like, oh, you dislike this game, but, like, it has these and these good things. Like, this is not a game review podcast, so we can't go in-depth about all the things no. good and bad about games. If you like so any we... video game <laughs> viewer, you are a fucking idiot, piece of shit, loser, and literally delete yourself from real life. And basically, um, if we left my, something out, it's, it's not because we're <laughs> ignorant, it's just like you know we had to move on especially yeah, me and Nate we, yeah. we talked a lot <laughs> that's uh sure sure uh yep that's true <laughs> all right uh i think we're done here uh gib tom any any final thoughts on this uh thanks everybody for listening for the to the 108th episode of the procrastinators <laughs> franchise that's right. Uh, I look forward to getting to 180, so we can do a 180 degree change and do something completely different from the PCP up to this point. That'd be uh, a very like funny not upload. That would be a like <laughs> it's dead panel. now. We killed it. Uh, that'll be great. That'll be great. Gib, any 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 thoughts? Any final thoughts here? Oh, we should we should pretend to be each other on the one. You're not Gib. Episode. Whoa. Uh, no, there Damn, are no roasted. more thoughts. Zero. <laughs> None. I am out of thoughts. <laughs> I, I, there's nothing left in my brain. No more sequel thoughts. It. They're done. Uh, yes. All right. Well, all right. It's time to switch on gears over here to our hashtag ask PCP section, everybody. Uh, I, on the Twitter, I use hashtag ask PCP every Saturday when we record. I send out a tweet. If you, uh, well, don't respond to it, but you just send a thing with hashtag ask PCP. Uh, you'll see it. You'll see it. Um, all right. I just want to give a shout out to this guy, Cult of the Yellow One. Oh, Someone's no. been continually asking about like our stances on gun control, and Whoa. I think it's this guy. Like every time, it's just like I don't know. I don't want to get into that shit. I have no fucking idea what the right. I'm just saying. Like I, I don't know. Uh, every uh, baby should have a gun, but every... anyone over the age of two should be killed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm satisfied by that answer. (laughs) Wait a minute. Oh, here's actually a relevant question. Uh, It's at Discount Picasso asks, are normies the root cause of all problems with art? I think that really sums up what, I we, mean, what we covered yeah, in this podcast. Yeah, it pretty much sums it up because like, it's, the people yeah, who don't care determine mm-hmm. – they're the vast majority – the vast majority of people don't care. And the That's vast right. majority of That's people right. control the market conditions and market conditions mm-hmm. are responsible for all major decisions because all major decisions are based on yep. money and not art. Mm. There you go. Yeah, that's I, and I don't see that changing. No, it never until will. we become a post scarcity society, which may never happen. I mean, we so. don't need to be a come a post scarcity. We just need to have a lot of money to be like, eh, I'll just well, give this strange artist. Like, or if we money. just have yeah, everybody so after great. two years old be killed, there are no more normies anymore. <laughs> <all> <laughs> I mean, that'll that'll fix this problem right now. <laughs> but the reason I, no, I don't agree with that, Gabe, is because as long as money has any influence, people will always want as much money as possible. So I think as long and like because that like equates to no, power. but like like yeah. like the there's like times in before mm-hmm. big money crashes and bank collapses and whatever mm-hmm. more weird art was being funded because people were like yeah sure you know i there's money to go around there's jobs for you to have mm-hmm. we don't it's not it's not a big deal we'll um, give this strange artist some some funding i agree but now if, now mm-hmm. you have to be a giant Super world be dominating Disney? franchise, unle- yeah, uh, or yeah. you're you're gone. I think the question yeah. though is less yeah. less about like what art is being made and more about what art is being uh, uh, supported. Because like even now you can make whatever you want on the internet, or whatever. But like the normies are always going to do the normie thing, you know. And they and that's that. Yeah, that's right. Problem. Like that's even right. if whatever's like, popular, it's just whatever's popular. Even if a studio threw a huge like budget behind like some crazy art film, like people are going to mm-hmm. be like, yeah, but Avengers twelve, dude. 
and they'll just go watch yeah. that. Like, I mean, that's yeah. There's a real consolidation I mean, yeah, of but... entertainment, honestly, just behind Disney. Like Disney's just buying everything. I mean, if, if things are being funded, that's the main. If things exist, that's the main thing. It's not about whether you can convince the majority of people that your weird art thing well, is good. Well, what would you say to this, though? Like, let's say it's that... Ju- it's that the artist is allowed to express themselves in the way well, that okay. you want. Okay, here's a real question, though. And this is kind of a separate thing, but it's like, if... So, let's say that, like, there's enough money to go around, for whatever reason, like, we get fucking universal basic income, or whatever, where, like, everyone can make their art. But the thing is, though... Like, there's so much market share dominance by, like, mainstream things like Avengers movies and, you know, just, like, all all the, like, normie stuff is so popular that it, like, on social media, which is how people communicate, it just, like, drowns out that. So, like, all audiences are, like, like, there's always going to be a couple people who are into your shit, but, like, the vast, vast majority of people, which I guess is actually true right now, uh, are just, like, inundated with, like, you know, Marvel and, you know, like, the new, I guess, Final Fantasy, but just, like, the AAA stuff. New Uncharted or whatever, uh, and they don't like pay attention to the small things. I don't know. Do you think that's like I, I personally fear as things kind of like power seems like it's getting consolidated online these days that things could end up in a place where like just through a lack of ability to compete with the market share and like the the budgeting the the advertising campaigns of like big Disney stuff that like it'll really drown out people and they'll you know do bad they, they they won't get the word out about their stuff yeah. any thoughts i mean, I mean that's how it's always been it's all that, 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 that is true live. that is true yeah it's all marketing i mean that's that's the whole thing that's why a lot of mediocre I would shit just does love, so well i i want i want the world to be uh like every man like is is, is uh, by his own strength and will can like break through and become you know, like king of his own castle and and acquire his own little domain in whatever way, I mean, as opposed to, and I don't know if that's realistic or anything. I feel, just, I that's feel my like ideal. The reason then there's clearly a reason that normies don't like weird shit, and yeah, that it's like yeah. the weird shit only appeals to a very specific mindset, and only a certain mm-hmm. amount of people have that. So even if everything that's weird gets funded, it won't be that important right. for most people. That's that true. It gets funded. Yeah. That's true. It's the same thing. Not everybody has the uh, the uh, the capacity to 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 build their own castle. Some people will just be the vassal, and that's just the way they are. Yeah. Um. Fair point. Fair point. So that's why you have to get to the top, have all the money, and abuse all those stupid people. And that's what Comcast did. And look how good they're doing. <laughs> they're doing pretty damn well. Pretty fucking damn well. Did you hear they made a cash bid for Fox to try to take the rug out from under Disney? Oh, did I didn't hear about that? A huge, Damn. Yeah, they're gonna like sixty billion dollars. I'm gonna straight up here you go, and they want to steal Fox from Disney. That's their big play Damn. right now. Yeah. Imagine. Okay. Okay. Think about this though, everybody. Imagine like your internet and TV service provider also owns the entertainment company that makes they do. the art. That they, they own they like distribute. TriStar and like they own Coca Cola and a bunch of crazy shit. Like, huh? I'm sure that doesn't cause any problems yeah. at all. I'm sure that doesn't influence like the stuff they create whatsoever. I'm sure hmm, I'm not going to see Coca Cola ads in front of every movie ever since like the yeah. late the mid '90s. Mm-hmm. Oh wait, I do. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> fucked up. Hey, watch watch the Jack and Jill Red Letter Media Review, everybody. Oh, I love that. That's one of the best. One of the best. Uh, hey, look, here's a good question. Uh, this is by hashtag down with Ben Saint. Oh. Uh, and this is in the page. <laughs> That's a hashtag hey, I can get behind. Yeah, I, I, the thing is, I think actually a bunch of people are using hashtag Ben Saint. So I'm just going to, I clicked on this thing. It says center. I think this is center point. I think okay. his name is center point. Uh, uh, yeah, I think he, I think he pledged to like the um, the Radcon fund and stuff. But well, anyway, I, I believe it's a separate point. Um, and his question is: If you guys could get a sponsor for the podcast in exchange for slightly censoring yourself, like bleeping the word nigger, would you do it? Would you do it? Because I, I I'm curious what you guys think. Because I've um, always had a deep personal aversion to the idea of like getting a known sponsor. It's just I, always I never say me the out. word anyway, I'm not so against, it doesn't matter to me. That's true. I'm not that's against. Sponsorship deals because mm-hmm. the you can like Game Grumps has shown you can make them really funny to mm-hmm. the point where I don't care at all. Those are yeah. Here's I like that. here's I the like thing. Here's the thing for me. I in that specific example, it would a depend on how much money it is. But if it was enough money to make sure. it lucrative, <laughs> um, I think that that specific censorship would have no artistic impact on the show itself i think it would be That's funnier true. to bleep out certain words like that because <laughs> i mean let's would... just say okay go on go on, go on. but like if mm-hmm. the deal was like these are like certain topics or things you can't go into like if it was like mm-hmm. legitimate like censorship i'd be like no like fuck that like nothing's worth yeah, that because yeah. then like 
the entire time like because even if you never like even go near those grounds the entire time mm-hmm. in the back of your head every time we record from now to the end of the time we'll always yeah. constantly be thinking about not doing that and then like 10 percent of our brain cpu is going to be dedicated to making sure we don't go somewhere and it'll just make the yeah. podcast worse it, yeah. that's true i'm okay with bleeping swears because a lot of the time bleeps are funnier bleeps are just funnier funny. than saying swears that is definitely true i I, I don't know. People don't agree with me on this. I'm, I'm glad that you do. Ble- listen, listen to something back, everybody. Bleeps are literally way funnier than just leaving in an actual swear. I, like, I, I don't know why. I like the idea so of true. like having different bleeps every time, like like a different noise, like I don't know, like a jackhammer or like I don't know, like a siren or something that I. Spend. The whole podcast is just that one episode of SpongeBob where they all swear. <laughs> Oh, Wait yes. a minute, I've got, yes. I've, I've got it. What if for each individual swear we use a specific type of bleep so that every, it's like it's like saying N-word or whatever. It's like so they come to associate that specific right, right. noise, whatever it may be, with oh, the actual word in no, question. No, they have to be common sounds you hear all the time in real life. So as you're just going around your everyday <laughs> life, you just hear swears oh, subconsciously. Damn. This is a great idea. We should do this. Yes. That is a good idea. We should do, do a censorship episode where we do that. Oh. That would be oh. uh, awesome. That all would be right. awesome. I'll all edit right. that because that sounds fun. All right. Actually, does sound fun like that should be at the very least a bonus episode for sure locked oh that'd be a great bonus episode Uh, i want to be on it so please don't do it while i'm away okay well we've already got one lined up for this month that'll be next month at the earliest sick all right on the okay that'd be dope i got Uh, a microphone by the way i'm gonna take it to lafania so oh Oh, that's dope sick glad to hear it uh, here's here's a question from uh, Kajoro Bitterthorn on the on the Patreon. Um, asks uh, question. I mean, this is a question for Dayton Tom, but anyone can respond. How do I abandon my nihilistic hedonism and embark on the path to becoming a productive boy that has goals? How do I convince myself that life will be better if I haven't achieved goals? I mean, I've got an answer to this. Um, um yeah. Yeah. What do you think, Tom? Shit. Like, like I guess, like. You need to, like, ask I, – I, I think for me, like, giving you an answer would really depend on, like, knowing exactly what your current mindset is. Like, how you feel mm-hmm. about, l- like, n- being more hedonistic. Like, if it feels good and you have no real desire to change, it's going to be hard to really, like, anything that I would say or suggest to take yeah. to heart. Because, like, it has to start with, like, a motivation to change. I'm going to assume that because yep. you're asking yep, the yep. question that you have that desire. And that desire is probably stemming from the fact that you're sitting around doing nothing long term and you feel – like shit and that's the first step (laughs) is because you have to realize like for me like when i when i make my my root source of all my good decisions which i'm doing more of lately um Mm -hmm. is that like especially like even like a simple example is like dieting because i mean my diet's been on point for like three weeks now and it's fucking great nice and like i just i just ask myself like 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 a really simple question like would i enjoy doing this now the answer is usually yes like going out and ordering Mm -hmm. a pizza but the answer is like will i enjoy this in an hour and the Indeed. answer is always <laughs> no. And 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 that's like a really good like kind of like stopgap for me is just like mm-hmm. realizing that like instead of thinking like, oh, I can't wait to have this pizza. I'm going to be so happy. I'm like, the real thing is like, I can't wait to have this pizza. I'm going to be miserable for the rest of the day. And that's that like. That is a great way to look that at is, it. Yeah. That is a great yeah. like way to be like, fuck that. I'd rather be like stoked later. And like in like 10 minutes, I'll just be fine. Like so, literally this, in 10 minutes, so I won't care the, anymore. The path. The path yeah, yeah. to productivity is it stems from the realization that um, suicide's kind of gay, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, why would you? Why, <laughs> why, why, why though? I mean, like, so... like if you're real, if you if you're not doing anything, you're gonna be depressed. And if you get too depressed, you think, "Why am I alive?" And then you think, "I'm gonna die. I'm gonna do it." But then, if you think about it even further, you realize it's kind of pointless and who cares? And nobody cares. I think the core of no, it. Nobody cares about you except you. And if it's you true. Don't care no about one's going to give then... a shit. And like the thing is, is that mm-hmm. uh, one one of the big things to realize if you want to start being more productive is understanding that happiness is not the goal. Fulfillment is, and fulfillment means doing things that aren't going to make you happy yeah. because you need to fill yourself with a sense of purpose and and feel like you are accomplishing something. That's what like gives us a sense of more than just happiness happiness is like eating a pizza and feeling good and it's not Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. it's not like um you have to find a a sense of purpose before you can do anything you have to trick yourself into having right your purpose if you don't know what your purpose is you make it if you don't know what your purpose is your purpose is try as much shit as possible until something clicks yeah that's that's step one so like if like oh I don't know what to do I don't know if I'm an artist or or a a reviewer guy or anything I don't know it's like yeah you do 
your goal, your purpose is to find your purpose. And that's what everybody should be doing yep. until they find it. Because that the actually, only way uh, you find what it is is by trying a ton of shit. When, when my dad, uh, when I was living with my parents and like looking for work and stuff, uh, like my dad just said to me like, Nate, until you get a job, your job, your eight hour a day job is looking for a job. Mm -hmm. And like that's basically the same sort of thing here. It's like, yeah, you should be focused on trying to settle this. And you know what? You're asking this question. So off to a great start. Uh, and uh, here's what I would add to that. Like, you specifically bring up the idea of nihilism and, and hedonism. And on a certain level, I, I agree that both of those things make sense I in a way. But, like, okay, like, what do you want out of life is the question that you've got to ask yourself. Like, we can accept all the realities that, like, there doesn't seem to be any objective value to life. Okay, fair enough. But you're alive, so why not make the best of it? Um, you know, and like hedonism, like, okay, wouldn't it be nice if we could, in theory, just like pleasure ourselves at a max rate all the time by, let's say, you know, just doing heroin. But okay, would doing heroin every day actually give me the kind of life that would be the best? Like, am I going to enjoy having to do an illegal thing that could get me thrown in jail? Am I going to enjoy, you know, having Isn't to it? scrape up money to afford this thing? And it doesn't have to be that bad, obviously. It could be as simple as ordering a pizza, like, like Tom said. Did you want to cut in, Gabe? Do you want to say something? Uh, I just thought, like, yeah. doing heroin, doing any drug over and over will res reduce, like, the impact it has on you, so you'd need more. Indeed, it's it fleeting. Goes, it goes back to being happy now versus being happy in an hour. But you know, no, but you know what pizza. doesn't fade? <laughs> but you know what doesn't fade? I mean, so th this is actually how I arrived at, like, what I want out of my life. You know what I want? I want a big, happy family that loves me legitimately. I want to be financially secure so I don't need to worry about the world. And, and I want to live in an environment where I, you know, feel good about myself. I, I feel good about, uh, like, my environment. It, it gives me positive vibes. And, and I want to physically, like, take care of myself so I live as long as possible and get to enjoy all this stuff. So, like, okay, like, if you disagree with those approaches, then we're not going to agree. Like, if you think, like, a good life is to just feel like let's say sexual pleasure as often as possible let's say that's your goal then i would highly recommend you start investigating how it is you can actually like make a plan to have as much sex as possible i mean maybe the plan for that is to literally just get a wife who loves sex then you need to like okay got to be able to support her got to be able to fucking you know like what is your goal in life that is where you need to start with this you heard mine and that's what i want um so to get there i'm doing things like pursuing careers that make me happy uh, you know, like making sure I make enough money so I don't need to worry about it and have freedom to do what I want to do. You know, like I, I, in my relationship, I try to make sure that I'm happy, that the other person's happy. Like all these things are worth thinking about. And, and to the point of being a hedonist, the thing is though, everything I described sounds like, I don't know, like fucking life coach, like hedonism's wrong. I think that like every human is basically just a hedonist. I'm simply a hedonist who wants to maximize across like the entire 70, 80, 90, maybe longer years of my life, how happy and enjoyable life is. And there's a completely rational basis to uh, do your homework, work out several times a week, eat healthy and deny yourself sugary foods that are a fleeting high. See, it's a right. fleeting high versus delaying gratification to, to live a happier life. That's where I would start with you. Think about what you want out of life and that, think that, about how that, to get there. That hashtag emotional edging life, you know? Exactly. That's the one. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, that's that's pretty much all I got to say about it. Good luck, dude. I hope you yeah. fucking crush it. Yeah, Kajoro. Crush that puss and crush that uh, dog Brain. also. With the opposite of puss. You get it? Excellent. <laughs> Next question. This is a funny one, actually. Tamaki X Aid asks, "What's your, <laughs> what is your most boring passion? Your most boring passion? I like that a lot. Hmm. I like that a lot. Damn, that's interesting. Like, okay, uh, this isn't a passion, but like, for example, I like to count to the number eight repeatedly throughout the day, and I really enjoy doing it. Um, <laughs> Wait, that's uh, yeah. <laughs> like, it, for, in it, what it's context? like a tick. It's well, it's like." When I when I'm driving, I'll do I'll play a little game with myself that I'll like. Okay, it's gonna be hard to explain, but like I do a thing where like the the telephone poles, like I try to count my own car lengths as I drive by them, and I count up to eight, and then I start over, <laughs> and uh oh. and I like to <laughs> I like to it's really satisfying for me when my eighth car length lands right before a final finishing telephone pole and isn't, you know, one of several lengths, you know, because you can fit like four cars in between telephone poles. Uh, and I count, I do this constantly <laughs> to myself. 
Uh, yeah, uh, that's what I've got. Uh, go to hell. I enjoy it. <laughs> Anybody <laughs> else? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm uh, trying to think I just... of like a boring passion I have. Uh, you go, mate. Okay, mm-hmm. it's, it's just related to Nate and Nate's thing. I mm-hmm. also do like a little counting thing in my head. Um, whenever I'm waiting for something. What do you count some... to? Uh, yeah, uh, whenever uh, I'm waiting for something and like, you know, uh, like let's say uh, I'm hitting something with the microwave or like... Um, Something else. Basically, it's just um, I count down down from six uh, to one three times. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I'm sorry. Say that one more time. I'm trying to parse that. In my when brain. I'm waiting for things, Let, let's say right. I'm hitting okay. something okay. in the microwave, and like I see there's like less than a minute left, then I start counting ah. in my head, like six, five, four, and I do it like like when I reach one, I go back to six, and I count down again. I do it three times in total. The mark of the beast. <laughs> <laughs> That's so appropriate for Mage. <laughs> Interesting. You, do you, now, let me ask. Do you do that as a way to kind of force time to pass so that yeah. when you look back? Yeah, I totally get that. I totally get yeah, it. I do like, stuff like it, that, too. Yeah, it's just like it, because I'm, I'm dragging out the numbers like six, right. five. It, like, I'm counting, <laughs> it sounds like I'm counting seconds, but like each second takes like five seconds to count, you know? So like you, you, That makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. You, you know what? I do when I'm on the treadmill uh, at the gym like and I see that there's like a minute left that's when I like really start to like I try to really forcibly distract myself like hardcore from not paying attention to like what I'm doing or the you know pain it's not really pain but like the pain of running and then like when I look back I'm like yes 10 seconds have passed Mm -hmm. and I keep forcing myself to like be distracted by things uh, it was. It really only works in that last minute because, yeah. like, I I try to do it when I'm like running for like long term things and like distract myself. So then when I look back at the clock, more time has passed. Mm-hmm. But it it's pretty ineffective. Uh, just because like I don't know, uh, whatever. It like my my brain is only like excited for the end to come when I'm actually close to it, like in that last minute or whatever. But w- w- whatever, just saying. I yeah, yeah I, I, I I do that too. Uh, like well, when weird. I have to wait for longer <laughs> things, I count down from sixty, and I always count it down because like when I count up, it just feels like it, it it doesn't. It's not as satisfying as reaching like the last ten, nine. Hey, you know, it's just like it's exciting. Like the mm-hmm. the lesser the number, the more exciting it gets. Like counting up is re- re- yeah, really yeah. tedious. It could go go on forever. Like, well, okay, I I reach sixty, but I can go like sixty one, sixty two. But when I'm counting <laughs> down to like the the last numbers, like I need to reach zero, 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 and that's it. That's all. That's <laughs> final. Everyone's dead. <laughs> uh, uh, Tom or Gib, do you have any boring passions in life? Um, I have. Well. I don't know whether it's like a boring passion. Mm-hmm. I, it's hard to because like the things you said, what didn't seem like passions. Yeah. They just seem like funny things. That you yeah, can... yeah, that's true. That's true. If if we're talking about funny things, uh, I like to open doors the absolute minimum amount that I need to to, <laughs> to slip through. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Like, like if I, if I need to just leave my room, I don't open the door the full way. I don't push it. I just open it just enough to slip through like a Why? cat. Yeah, I was you know? going to say, you're Why? just like a cat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because like I feel like, well, I I mean, I'm quite thin, so I can yeah, slip yeah. through. And... um. I don't know why. I think it's just sort of something I've always done it... because why expend extra energy to push a heavy door? I would argue you're further? spending more energy by doing it this way. Okay, you know what? No, I'm, but not, like, I'm not here to judge. This is just interesting. No, but like, like I, I do mm-hmm. movements like that uh, for no re- real reason. Like, sure, I, sure. I just, like, a, like, a, like weird pirouettes and like moving swiftly from like. <laughs> I I I, I sort of glide around. like like uh-huh. like when I'm when I'm getting a cup of tea, you know, I put the kettle on and then I sort of when it when it's time to get the milk in, I sort of uh-huh. glide over to the fridge, pull it open with enough force to like open the seal so that it's not like uh-huh. sticking, and then the door slowly opens. And while it's opening, like I let go of it to to let it swing open slowly, I grab oh. the milk and then I kick it back as I <laughs> swoosh round. <laughs> Like I, I twirl around. Well, like good. it's it, completely pointless, but it's sort of like nice to have like a flow to I'm random right. pointless movements. You have completely failed this question because this isn't boring at all. This is fascinating. <laughs> yes. this is fascinating. This, where, where was where was this during Gib makes breakfast on the rag? <laughs> yeah, I want to see those pirouettes and shit. Yeah. Well, it's it's only when I'm like really, um, really into, uh, not into, but like uh, uh, familiar with the location. We need, right. we need, right. we need So like, it. if I do something a lot, I get I get bored mm-hmm. of like doing mm-hmm. it normally. So I just do, we need do, a candid camera silly. of of give makes breakfast in the homeland that's true clearly i mean 
I do a lot of talking to myself in the car. That's I feel might be a similar sort of thing where I'll just like yell things at myself. Like just because like I feel like I wouldn't do it if there was a crowd, but I like feel free and I can just like go crazy in my car. That's why I love driving. It's just like I can just I should oh, never I'm, do that. I'm free. There's a sick animation video yeah. of, of a guy. Uh, I, I can't mm-hmm. remember what it's called. I'll I'll link it to you later. It's, okay. it's like a guy is in his car. He's going, ha ha. He's doing a Mickey Mouse voice. <laughs> uh-huh. And he's been all completely retarded. And then he gets out of his car and then he walks over to someone and he just says, hey. <laughs> it's just sort of like, when you're in your car, you're completely insane. But you, as soon as you come out, you're just like a normal I th- person. I th- That's awesome. I Shout out to Sick Animation. Maybe we can find that later and look at the show. I, I, don't, I don't know how people do that. Even when I know I'm, I'm completely alone and no one can hear me, I, I still can't like bring myself to do like noises like yell or... Or, or sing oh, yeah. loudly or something that I, I do it all the time. <laughs> yeah, I just turn it's into fun, a complete man. idiot. Like, I just let my full autist just come out when no one's around. I, do like, I think you're joking, like, but I can take this mask of off. When I forget, like, like I'll just how... make weird sounds to myself. Oh. I'll be like, ew, ew. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I'll just I do, I do that. that sometimes, but only when like I'm thinking, I was like, I forgot how this sounds. Or like, would I be able to make, like, <laughs> would I be able to pronounce this thing? So I just randomly say things sometimes, but not my loud. brain just needs right, to like make right. sure it's alive sometimes so it just like gives me like these weird vocal spasms it's like yeah your vocal cords still work just double checking <laughs> oh oh i've actually got a boring passion okay all right i enjoy i don't have a scrapbook but i collect things as if i was going to put them in a scrapbook and i leave them in a drawer uh, things like um okay every every plane ticket i have mm, uh every mm. like thing when they wrap the thing around the bag the the bag tags yeah i keep those yeah. after i rip them off i just put them in there because and any t- tickets or things that i've been to i'm like you know what uh, that has a date on it i can look at that date and try to remember what happened so i'll i'll keep it so that's really boring but i enjoy doing it yeah okay that that qualifies that qualifies like like a stamp collecting thing it's, it's pretty yeah. boring for people i mean you know other people don't care yeah all right all right um tom did you have one I'm like trying to think of something actually. I know it's hard, right? I think mine was a total mine failure. So I can't think mine, of a good one. I think th- there are probably things, but they just blend into like my life because I don't think about them 99 percent of the time. Yeah, um, yeah. It's hard to think of something that you can ca- you can understand as boring and also something you, you are passionate yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true. If you're, you know, if you I, are I, passionate about it, you don't I, think of it as boring. You know what? I think I actually have one, and this is sort of demonstrably boring. Uh, it's it's like I have a passion for playing video games alone. Or like to to like just like zen like because like in in college my friends would all gather around and we'd play like all these games together. But like when I'm when I was playing like uh, Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep came out during that time, and like people would like try to talk to me. I'd be like, "Fuck off! I'm playing. Yeah. A bit, like I care about what's happening. I can't Shut the stream hell up. games for that reason because I still feel like there's a crowd of people. Even yeah, if there's... yeah. I mean, I would only stream a game I like don't care about or like right, have beaten yeah. a bunch of no, times. If I was that's gonna, the only thing. If I play a new yeah. game, like get the fuck away from me. Like, yeah, I yeah, like, like talk when, to you, same. I don't want to see when, you. When Ben and I did you. our legendary uh, T-Bat plays of, Equ- of Equestria Bound, I think oh, one of the reasons yeah. it was so nightmarishly horrible and it lasted for more than 100 episodes uh, was just because like – because of this, like, new game syndrome where, like, I, I actually, like, was trying to, like, figure out what was going on. And I'm incapable of both, like, being a funny Let's Play boy. I mean, this is years ago at this point, And also, like, trying to, like, enjoy a new game. I, I can't do both at the same yeah. time. I, yeah. so, you know, For a while, you know, I was streaming yeah. uh, Devil May Cry 5 or DMC Devil May Cry. And I could stream that fine yeah, because, yeah. like, I'd already played that game, like, at least seven times by the time I streamed mm-hmm. it. So I was, like, just talking oh, yeah, like, yeah. in the chat and, and, like, having discussions and just, like, mindlessly, like, destroying that game because it's super it's like, easy. Uh, me and my, uh, like, in, in, in Boston, there's this awesome theater. I, I don't know if it still does. I assume it still does. That plays The Room. Uh, like every like Friday night or something, and it's like a big event, and everyone has so much fun because there's so many, so many like community things. Like we all, when the spoons appear on screen, we all throw spoons oh, at the screen. I've seen what stuff those? about that. You actually participated yeah. in those. Oh, that sounds so fun. I we went, we it. went a couple times, dude. It's it's so much fun. You guys should definitely come sometime. But um, the thing is, I took my friend John to one. He had not seen the room before, oh. and this was a nightmarish experience for him. He yeah. had no idea what was going. It was a mistake. It was oh. just like we were going anyway and he was in town i actually so, haven't uh, seen the room i keep planning on watching it but duh I, you're gonna I know, love it i yeah, promise you yeah i know i know enough it. about it it's even like better probably... than gurren Lagen. 
<laughs> well, let's not get crazy. I feel, I feel like I'm overhyped for the room. I feel like if I actually yeah, I mean, ever watched it, yeah. it wouldn't be that. Fun. I just, it's, I, I, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, on, it seems fun to just like throw spoons in the screen whenever spoons appear, and everyone's yeah, spoons. Yeah. It just sounds so <laughs> stupid. I love and, it. And there's uh there's there's times when uh, they go outside and throw the ball around. That in the theater we have footballs that we toss around <laughs> to each other. Oh God, it's uh, I mean just one of the best movie watching experiences I've ever had. <laughs> Um, but yeah, don't, don't get overhyped. You know, I, I remember hearing about that movie first from the Nostalgia Critic and Whoa. his review of The Room. That was a while I must have watched a dozen times. A dozen times I watched that video. And then I was like, you know what? Let's actually check out the movie. And uh, amazingly, it was even better than the Nostalgia Critic review Whoa. of that movie. I know. I know. Mind Shocking. Blown. Um, okay, I've got, I've got one more question. Actually, Tom, did you, did you think of anything? I mean, I don't... Um, I, don't I mean, the only thing I can come up with, which is super yeah. fucking mundane and really boring, is that, like, mm -hmm. when when I'm just doing nothing sometimes, I'll have, like, my phone or, or like, a computer or whatever, I kind of, like, just mm -hmm. playing with, like, the little animations that they put in and just, like, trying mm -hmm. to, like, slowly look... Like, sometimes, like, I got an iPhone right now, if you swipe down, it goes, like, the search bar, but it slowly blurs out the background... Like just slowly uh -huh. playing with that sometimes, like watching the animation. Okay. It's, yeah, it's, it's it's dumb. Just like yeah, this is cool. It's a blur, fun. I am, and like I'm, any little yeah, thing, cool. I'll like play with little transitions like that because I'm easily amused by by <laughs> things that move. Okay, I am very <laughs> passionate about like whenever mm. like I'm bored or tired that I don't want to go to bed, placing my forehead on the table and just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome! That's a that's a perfect example. She's passionate about placing her forehead on her desk. I love that. That's Wait, fantastic. Waiting for death. That's basically <laughs> somebody. Somebody, please draw a mage waiting for death, <laughs> at sitting at her desk with her forehead pressed to it. Oh, I love that. That's so visual. I love that. How, how long will you sit there for? I sometimes actually sit for more than an hour because I just... Oh, <laughs> my God. <laughs> what a, a legend. Oh, you know, God like, damn. To be fair, I am thinking about things while I'm doing it. I just don't. Well, I, can, sure. I just can't okay. or don't want to go to bed, and I'm just too <laughs> exhausted to do anything on the computer. Oh, I That is the worst middle that's perfect. ground. Yeah, that's... I love so that. Sometimes I do something similar, but it's not when I'm tired. It's when I feel like death, when <laughs> sure, I'm like, really sure. sick. And I and I curl up in like um in like the the prayer pose for like you know uh, you know how Muslims pray they oh they're they like a head to the ground sort of thing yeah right? I yeah. I just uh, that's the most comfortable position I go into the bathroom <laughs> I sit down there oh, with my head on the ground no. and I stay there for like until I feel better <laughs> wow and it, and it works it works like a charm <laughs> well, fant uh, Muhammad has blessed you I guess I guess Allah. so yeah. yeah well fantastic uh, are, are you facing Mecca yeah I was about to this? ask are you that's facing Mecca <laughs> I've never checked oh maybe you uh, are uh, I, I, maybe I'm you're probably maybe... facing Mecca like one quarter of the time your bathroom's positioned in such a way that you just happen yeah. to be facing the Holy Land. Uh, he's facing Mecca, a.k.a. Gurren Lagann, uh, a.k.a. Gundam. I get it? Do you understand the joke? <laughs> no, I, right, excellent. I, I, I hate you. Oh, Mecca, oh, okay. I get it. Mm, yeah, yeah, excellent. Terrible. Excellent. <sighs> all right, all right. <laughs> well, uh, here, here's one more question. Uh, wait, shit, where did it go? Um, uh, this is from Are You Guy, or Rue Guy says, uh, I can't come up with a question. Uh, what's your favorite anime? Okay, no, I'm just kidding. Um, oh, God, I was going to say, we already question, made a though. terrible joke like that last week. That I, I every t it's funny to me every time. Please keep asking what's no, your favorite anime. Don't. It's so funny. Don't. I can't stop no. laughing uh, <laughs> every damn time. Um, oh shit, where did it go? Fuck. Sorry, I I, I lost my place. Um, no, that wasn't it. It was. God damn it. I know I was going to read this something. This is why you don't read the ones about anime. <laughs> I, the fucking anime questions are the bane of this fucking question section. No, I already read that one. Uh, how about no? That's shit. Uh, uh, okay, well, okay, here's one sort of relevant. A meme Slayer, and I think another person asked this too, uh, Iraxon, basically asked, uh, biggest dip in quality from a franchise? Like, started good, ended terribly. I mean... I'm stuck. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. And that was like, that wasn't even a reboot. That was just the same thing. <laughs> it's, it's just the same thing. It got so bad. It got so bad. Um, I, I don't know. Like, uh, I, I really got to watch I mean, that American it... Psycho 2, because I think it might be American Psycho 2. Um, from what I've heard. American Psycho 2 just makes me think of, like, all those not really made by Disney, not not high-budget Disney yeah. sequels. Harvest Moon. Right. Oh, oh, Harvest Moon, really? You think so? I, I've only played one, Have you uh, seen, and only like, barely. The one on the PC, have you played that one or seen anything about it? I've been playing uh, uh, Stardew Valley, but no, no, I, I have not. Stardew Valley is not, the, <laughs> not from the franchise. It's like, uh, there's, like, it's been... Harvest Moon thing sort of like split mm -hmm. between like Story of Seasons and Harvest Moon and like the original Harvest mm -hmm. Moon people I think are working on Story of Seasons games and the 
The current Harvest Moon is just like absolute crap if you know anything about the PC one. Oof, oof, that's terrible. I never played, okay, a quick disclaimer, I, I never played like the old Harvest Moon games because I never had uh -huh. a handheld. I, I played one of the Story of Seasons games and it was okay. Um, but the but the PC one, they charge like forty dollars for something that's like, like worse than like a mobile game. I feel sometimes it's just like ah, oh, the graphics are so terrible. How can they charge so much for something Oof, so horrible? Rough. And like I've heard, mm, I, I the, the the reviews and sort of like the let's plays I've watched, I I. I thoroughly researched because I really wanted to get a Harvest Moon for PC because I like PC games, but like, ah, uh, it's so terrible. It's, it's just gone to shit, though. It's not yeah. worth the yeah. money. It's it's so disappointing that I only got into the Harvest Moon when it started being absolutely shit. <laughs> At least you got the old games, oh, I guess. I, yeah. I've got, I've got, I got one. Okay, Bionicle. The first, the first oh, six Bionicles oh, okay. were the coolest Dude, ones, they were and then after so that, good. they all sucked. I, I totally stopped caring right. about Bionicle for that reason, because I really liked the first designs, Bionicle. and they were super cool. People were really Sh into Bionicle. Shut the fuck up, Nate. Bionicle's I'm sorry. dope as shit. I, <laughs> I will kill you. I, it, I knew it, people it who were legitimately as dope huge as fans the... as, like, adults of Bionicle. Dude, uh, this, is, this is a while ago. Though, I but. want Bionicle so bad, but they're, they're <laughs> Hippo, too expensive. Did you? Did you? I lost all of mine. <laughs> Dude, yes. No, Hippo. Did you? Did you get like the Lego magazine back? Did they have that in the UK? I did. Did you get like the the original like DC comic book with like the little interactive CD that like introduced I, all the characters and like blew my mind to shit because it was get that little it CD. was so sick. It had like full 3D animations of like all the characters and introducing the world. That, and I was that like, I'm is so a big nostalgia. I completely forgot about that, but yeah, it was like a the GameCube sized CD. Yes. And it came with like the Whoa. it was like the first comic. I had like the one with Kopaka, the ice guy. That was like his store, his backstory. Then the disc had all the characters on it. And like for the next couple issues, it kept having a comic that told with the characters. I was like, I love this. This is the coolest shit ever. It was dope. And I went and I bought all the sets. My mom hated me because I spent all her money, but it was so cool. <laughs> and then and then like two years later or like a year later, they changed all the designs and nobody looked cool anymore. And I wanted to kill myself. They 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 fucking um. Nomurred them. They nomurred all of the Bionicles, oh, yeah, and they had no. too many bells, yep, too many whistles. They they had... The masks were not iconic anymore. <laughs> Agreed. They sucked. <laughs> Agreed. The worst. Think... The only the only Bionicle uh, spinoff I liked were the little spinny guys that turned into a ball that you could roll I around. Those. those. Yeah, were cool. yeah. I, I think Biter told me about the, the, exactly what you guys are talking about, like how they used to be cool, but they're not anymore. A, a long while ago, it's just like this is so weird. <laughs> Yeah, feels like yeah, you know, it's... It still haunts me. It still haunts me that Barnacle sucks. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> awful. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. Um well hey guys. Okay, enough enough questions for now, I guess. But I, I I've got a thing though. Um so I've got I've got two things to say. Now number the first one is I want to announce on an actual episode, uh in case we haven't already, the PCP highlights channel exists now. D did we mention that last time? I I don't think no. we did. I don't think we did. No. So there's a, there's a new channel. It's called PCP Highlights, and it is uh, highlights from various PCP episodes. Now, as time of recording, there's only one, but there's going to be a bunch out by the time you see this shit. So I'm just letting everybody know. That's where we're going to be putting highlights uh, and little clips of episodes and shit. Uh, it, it's kind of trying to get off the floor right now. It's basically just me doing it. But, uh, you know, we're working on it. We're exploring. I think, I think people are going to appreciate it. So... There's that. There, there'll be. I'm sure there'll be a link in the description, um, and uh, I'll probably put like a link in the channel banner as well. Aren't you know, there you have uh, people for that. making making their own clips as well already? There, there, yeah, a bunch of people have. I only made one. A bunch of people have like submitted clips, uh, and a bunch of other people have just given time codes for things they think are good things to do. And if you go, if you're a patron and you go to the uh, PCP highlights channel on the PCP patron Discord, uh, then people are submitting stuff there that I'm that I'm like taking suggestions from. So uh, if you just if you just give a good moment, you know, I'll I'll give it a look over and and we'll see how this goes. So you know, just letting you know, just letting you know. Um, should we announce the the? I think we already announced it, but like the contest for our theme. Yes, that's so that's that we, that was announced two episodes ago as of this happening. Uh, and yeah, it's, we, forgot it's to, in, we forgot to mention it last time. That's right, because like the episode hadn't come out yet, so nobody submitted anything. <laughs> but so we've gotten at least one submission already from uh, our buddy AJ Shoop. Sick. Now, sh sh like I, uh, uh, full disclosure, I have not listened to it yet. <laughs> I'm like, so like, there we're, we're getting them in. I think what we should do is by next time, by next time, we should wait for them some more ones to roll in, see how many we get, and then do a review or, or like kind of kind of go over it as a segment. I mean, like see, uh, see what we've got or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, intro themes for the procrastinators. Oh, okay. That's right. So I guess for now, what we'll say is, so people, uh, keep submitting them. And keep sending us your shit. 
Uh, if you're if you're a, um, a, a, a patron, go to the fan art warehouse and submit them. If you're not a patron, uh, feel free to uh, tweet us. You know, usually what do we say? Like hashtag PCP theme. I think was the deal, and so. at or at TP and we'll we'll take a peek. Um, so do that, and and sounds good. Now, the only other thing I wanted to say at the end of the episode here was, so a while ago, we did talk about doing, like, highlighting people's, like, art and stuff, and uh, I think we should do that. I think we should do that. Yeah. So we, we, we still got that fan art warehouse in, in the patron Discord there. Um, other than that, you'll have to tweet at us if you want to send us your shit, so feel free to add TP Crastinators, and I guess, hashtag PCP fan art? PCP art? I don't know. I'll check both of those. Um, so, uh, if you guys are in the fan art warehouse thing on the, on the patron Discord, I'm, I'm looking there. I, I also linked one in the main chat. Check out this drawing, who showed up in the last bonus episode of the Lord oh. of Ghosts himself yeah, it was so by L- Len Slines. I think it's Line Slines. I think it is. Um, there it is. Looks awesome. It looks awesome. Though, does, does, the, does the Lord of Ghosts canonically have a gun? Let's be serious here. <laughs> <laughs> well... I mean, it's, autistic liberty. It's 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 so the taken. it's the ghost sure. of a gun because gun control laws, and they killed all the guns, so now it's just the ghost of a destroyed gun. Yeah, when when you when you outlaw something, mm-hmm. the, the ghosts are now they have it. So they used <laughs> right. to be drunk a long time ago, and now they're all hooked up on drugs. <laughs> but now weed is legal, so now all they have is guns. Uh, excellent, excellent. Um, check out this other one from the <laughs> the Undertaler fan account. <laughs> I think I've seen this around, but it's submitted here regardless. It's like it's a magenta <laughs> filter overlaid picture of Vriska that says, "I have so much sex with my husband Tavros." Um, this is sublime. This is supreme. It's, it's digi. Um, it's, it's definitely Vriska. like digi. Vriska. I forget. I forget the the. I remember there was context to why he drew this, and I can't remember it. Was there? I mean, I get that it's like Digi Vriska. Like, this is what Vriska would be like uh, if she were literally Digi. Uh, but I, I like the... I, like, I just like everything about this. This is great. This is fantastic. Um, now, next one here is coming from uh, your boy Chip in the Franks, or uh, Chip Wiseman, at Chip Wiseman Art on Twitter. And it's a picture of a good old arm. Defeating Digi for good and all in the legendary Radcon Three yes. Royal Rumble. I really like one of the most amazing how moments. How he drew that, like the the, the motion, so it was yeah, really the impact neat. feels tangible. I yeah. like. Yeah, it's so dynamic. It's so dynamic. I love it. By the way, these are from like Some months ago, so like kind of, nobody's yeah, been yeah. submitting them. <laughs> Any anything that has Digi getting his ass beat is is great A material to me. I don't know about you guys. Uh, that's, yeah, I mean, that's pretty good for now. The, the problem is we've just totally let this, like, lie and, like, we haven't have. been doing we've it been at all. So, like, we got We never really started, so, you know, yeah. the yeah, best... Yeah, that's this right. Is, this is the start. Yeah. People send in images of, of PCP-related stuff, and we will talk about it next episode if you put it in or tweet at us. I, I think the most reliable way is to use Twitter to... Let, let's, let's develop a real hashtag right now for things for this, that I can you know, just search the hashtag and it'll all be there. What we should do is, if we're going to yeah. do it on Twitter, we should just create a moment on the, the, the PCP Twitter account and gather all the what tweets the we get. What the hell is a goddamn moment? I don't know what... It, I, I've you never a moment them. is is a thing where you can save tweets in a, in um, like a gallery. In a, in a place. That's that sounds gallery. actually super helpful. It's what I use on, on Twitter for all my 3D stuff. I just put them in a moment. I have, oh, I have I? a moment of like when I invented uh-huh. the alley-oop character. Oh, shoot. Can I... Can oh, I like, okay. Can I like make, make like a moment out of all like the art sort of uh, tutorial things that I favor? Yes. Favorite? Yeah, you can yeah. make a moment for whatever you want. Ah, oh. oh, that, that is sounds, so okay, useful. I've, never I've been wanting yeah. that. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Well, that's cool. That's cool. So, uh, all right. So maybe we'll do that. But I guess we should still just have a hashtag. All right. Let's call it hashtag PCP art. All right. Go. We'll go with that. And do just it. whatever you want to submit, we will look at it. We'll we'll do so. I, I we have to develop some like infrastructure to actually listen to, like music or something. I don't know how we could work that in. Uh, all right, but we're working on it, people. We're, we're trying to improve. We're trying to expand. Yeah. And you know, people have also been asking about like having a voicemail box to listen to voicemails. We really I'm totally down for that. that. I'm totally I mean, we brought that, that up a while ago, but the problem was that logistically we just don't know how to do it yet. But I'm sure. Yeah, that's I'm right. I'm sure with a that's little right. bit of googling p- and maybe p- some please, actual sir. effort. Please send us instructions on how to do it. I don't know. I'm too baby. I'm a baby. I hope someone sends I, I, you a I, link. When I hit two years old, I'm going to die, that. and I'll be replaced <laughs> by another baby. I'm not allowed to live. My gun won't protect me from that age limit of my life. 
Well, that's a good <laughs> meme. It's a quality meme. Please draw that and send that to hashtag PCPR. Yes, pl- draw please this draw every society. baby with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> draw this perfect society of under two-year-old babies all armed with guns and all the two-year-olds being shipped off to the glue factory. That sounds uh, perfect. Or No, to the gun factory. The, the babies become they the guns. They get turned into guns. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> Well, I've done half your work for you, artists. Now get out there and, and put pencil to paper. Uh, I'm the ideas guy around here. He is the ideas guy. <laughs> uh, all right. I, I think we're actually done now, everybody. Uh, hopefully we covered everything. Feel free to tweet us, uh, you know, at TP Crasteners if I missed anything. But hey, you should definitely be a patron. Patreon.com slash The Procrastinators. One dollar, you're in. You're in, our, you're in our shit. You're up in our grill. Two dollars, you're out. <laughs> Two dollars, you're out. <laughs> Oh, my God. Someone should make it so it works that way. Uh, that'd be incredible. Uh, one dollar and you're in. You get into the, 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 the main chat. Uh, you're in the, the, the fucking um, the chat, the, the TPC. Fuck, what, what is it? The, the goddamn questions bar. The questions bar where we read lots of those questions from in addition to the, the hashtag AskPCB on Twitter. Uh, and also there's like 14 fucking bonus episodes. And you get them all for patroning five dollars. That's five dollars. And beyond that, well, you're, you're, you're just a bit of a madman. Well, that's it, everybody. Thanks for listening. Uh, thanks for joining us for this intellectually stimulating conversation. I had fun. I had fun. Yeah. I hope you uh, did too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Me too. Four, four people is a nice, chill sort of discussion time. Yeah. We I should agree. not have 70 people on the next episode. Well, Hashtag I will be on no the next limits. episode, so there you go. One less person. <laughs> Look forward to Mage's <laughs> next game review on the next episode of the PCP. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> even <laughs> <laughs> we'll insert it post, you know, in editing. We'll, we'll just you we'll know. get a little robot to say it. We'll fly a little robot. drone around Mage wherever she goes that just pipes back audio uh, only about game review and game analysis. Uh, it's got an algorithm to determine. Uh, draw that too, everybody. This drone, uh, this game analysis <laughs> draw drone. Everything. Yeah, draw it all, people. Draw it all. Uh, all right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, you know, uh, give us your money. Uh, you know, do that. And also, thanks for watching. See you next week, everybody. Yeah. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. I'm supposed to good. be working yeah, like right now. I'm supposed to.